Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful Saturday, the first Saturday in 2023. Happy New Year from the gang here from Thoughts Count Anywhere. This is our debut show at our new home, Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Studios in the heart of Las Vegas. Of course, you can find us, you're watching us, hopefully, on our Facebook page, but you can also watch on the Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Facebook page, YouTube, Roku, downloadable app for WWDB TV. We are all over the place, and we will go through that as the show progresses. However, we have got a, dare I say, stacked card for today. See what I did there? Yeah. Was that good? Very good. To my far right, for those of you who do not know, that is that is Mr. Matt Mullen. Mr. Matt, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm glad to be back in the studio, and our new improved studio looks freaking <laughs> awesome. Next to him is one of the founders of Thoughts Can Anywhere. Uh, we've been on the air, what, over three and a half years now. We started out doing our show at the Power Play Sports Collectible Store in the Boulevard Mall. He is Mr. Scott Hosey. Welcome, sir. Thank you. And I have to make an announcement. You know, here at the studio, we pay off our debts. <laughs> God. Is there a net? Well, never mind. Huh? Thank you very much. The man <laughs> in the middle. I don't mind. The man in the middle. He is a longtime fan favorite, not only here in our Las Vegas area for wrestling, but really all over the country. He is a man simply known with one little simple word. We love him to death. His name is Chief. Good morning, Chief. You want to watch the wrestling sign over there? Oh, good morning, everyone. The two salute to you all. Oh, my goodness. To my right is an individual that we call the historian. I don't know how he got to start doing stuff on our show. He keeps tagging along. With Chief early on, and we said we took him in like a stray dog, didn't we? He is also a historian, Mr. Thomas Burnett. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? We're doing very well. And online, we'll bring around the show here momentarily, but first, we're going to go over some headlines. Uh, we have waiting, as you see there on the screen, is our dear friend, the, one of the original Glow Ladies, the original first champion, the Royal Hawaiian, Miss April Hom. Good morning, April. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I'm good. Is the sound okay? The sound is yeah, perfect. Yes, we're right on target. Yeah, so we're okay. good. We are good, good, good. And then coming on in the second hour, <clears throat> Scott, why don't you do the honors of letting our audience know who's coming on? A gentleman by the hour. name of Dave Marquez, who uh, has been around the wrestling business for quite some time. Uh, he's also uh, our vice president of WrestleConnects, but the uh, United Wrestling Federation network that goes on in Phoenix, LA, uh, Hollywood Championship Wrestling. Uh, He's in Atlanta, a whole yep. bunch of other places. Yeah. So uh, he'll be talking about the United Wrestling Network and uh, Hollywood Championship Wrestling. Don't forget, you know, one of his uh, champions was uh, Adam Pierce because he was involved in the NWA for quite some time. That's days. right. But I, I noticed something. Uh -oh. um, everybody has a jersey here, TCA jersey. Well, you know, I was a founding member, but unfortunately, <laughs> Network. I have a group that uh, – Knows how to take care of me. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, here's where we'll get so slapped. Maybe I should jumping. just wear this. Wow. 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 These people know how to take care of people. You put okay. that on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That Chief's is, favorite. <laughs> good morning, Ronald. Ronald is with us. Ronald, please make sure you share us, as I know you normally do all over the place, as we are now coming from our new studio. We appreciate it. Why don't you bring up April's uh, microphone? Let's bring her in. She's she's all bringing that pretty face to make us all look better around here. So April, as you know, we kind of talk about some rumors. We talk about stuff going on in the wrestling world, and we have a couple of hot topics, of course, all relating to some big news this past weekend. I'll throw the first one out at the guys. We'll get your opinion on it here momentarily. First rumor: I understand that the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund is emerging as a possible bidder for WWE, and we heard during this week. Somebody by the name of Vincent Kennedy McMahon said that I will not approve a sale for the WWE unless I'm back as the board chairman. Your thoughts, Matt? It was kind of crazy how fast that happened. He went from a letter of intent to he's about on. I would. I saw it that night. I wrote an article on the website. I woke up the next morning. He's the chairman of the board. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy how fast little threats from Vincent McMahon work. <laughs> Uh, skip me in because I'd like to end You'd this like second. to go last? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thomas, your thought as the historian. It's cr it's crazy how he just came back into power so quickly after being kind of exiled and no one thought he would be back. And now 
with all this shit going on, he's back. Is it a swerve? Is it part of a storyline that's really been out there for seven months? April, your thoughts on Vincent Perry McMahon coming back to the fold? You know what? I'm I'm just surprised. I thought he was going to be gone. <laughs> so, you know, oh, I, I I'm missing my my sports slash wrestling correspondent Sam Weissman, yes. who passed yes. away last month. I usually get all my updates, all my articles, anything to do with wrestling or sports, I get from him. And he keeps me up on everything. So this is my first show that I'm without Sam. And so I'm not, I was doing some stuff yesterday, but I'm not totally up on everything right now. So I would just have to say I was surprised. So not much thought on it, but um, just wait and see what happens. I. You know, I don't, I don't, I thought Vince was going to be gone for good. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Good morning, Jennifer out in Hawaii. Good morning to you there. Uh, you know what? I, I agree. Um, and I want to get Chief's input on this as well. Um, although he kind of mumbled, I, I kind of heard him say, I too wish he had stayed away. But Chief, thoughts on McMahon coming back? Oh, I'm so happy. I'm deferring to Mr. Hosey. <laughs> I want to ask everybody just quick good, bad, bad. Bad. Even though the stocks went bad. Up. Good for business, bad for creative if he gets into it. And you all lie. You know why? Why? A shout out to FSW here, Joe DeFalco. But okay. if you owned up FSW and Vince McMahon came to you and said, I want to be your partner, every one of us at this table would say yes. It's not Don't just, lie. No, no, no. For FSW, yes, in that scenario. But for the WWE, which um, – We've seen that it really didn't need, I should say doesn't need, but since he left, anybody have any problems with what's been going on with WWE? How did I lie? No. I said he's good for business. Exactly. I, I take that back, my butt. He's just like an ex-president of ours. He's uh, like, <laughs> good for business. He's been political. out of touch with creative for years. <laughs> yeah. But business-wise, he's a billionaire for yeah. a reason. There's a reason why that machine, the WWE, and that was Vince McMahon. He's also a major stockholder, so he can't do any negotiations without him on, being on the board especially if he's talking to Fox, Disney, ABC, ESPN, all those networks. So he's got to be there by law. So, you is, know. Is he – Stephanie's in charge of the company right now, correct? Her Steph and Nikon. Her and Nikon, yeah. Okay. So with Vince coming back, whatever position or whatever Vince is going to do – I, and I understand what you're saying. I'm pretty old, but I understand some things. He is a stockholder. Yes. But he's not the majority stockholder. Yes, he is. Yes, he, he, is. Is he, is. he is the majority. He is the majority So then bottom line is what he basically says goes. Sure. And I think he's learned, and I think we all agree, his days of creative are behind him. And I don't think he's going to touch the machine of creativity. But when you look at the negotiations with Fox – whatever network, whatever broadcasting system, he put that all in place. So there's not going to be anybody better than him to negotiate those deals, especially if he's trying to sell the company because he is the majority stockholder. So he's going to need to be involved in that. So or he's buying it back to go back to being a private company. Well, there was I saw that in an article <laughs> yesterday. That was a talk as well. But here's the thing with Vince. He's what, mid-70s? Is that right, roughly? Watch it. No, no, yeah, no, watch no, it. No, no, no. I, I can no, still I'm, kick your ass why, here. I know. That's why I'm tiptoeing around my, my <laughs> That's why you right said have him next to That's correct. Right, hold him back. Um, <laughs> Yeah, seriously, he's his mid-70s, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, he's not going to be around forever to yeah. continue running and being part of WWE. So at some point, there had to be or has to be, as we now know, a transition anyway. Mm -hmm. And why can he not be a consultant to Stephanie and, and Khan when it comes to a sale and be quiet? Not, not be quiet, but kind of aid them as a consultant instead of doing this bull rush to get his position back. Well, everybody thinks that, it, you know, the contract's not up for a year, but negotiations take a year for a right. major contract sure. like that. So in the political world of- The contract's not up for a year. Uh, but <laughs> the, uh, we had a little it was feedback so good, we was, had to hear it twice. Exactly. Be, uh, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> we're having audio issues in the studio. Oh my God, this is bad, bad news. Is it still uh, me? But the thing of it is you have to have that name because stockholders, aren't necessarily wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. They don't know who Triple H is, right. but they know who Vince McMahon is. Yeah. So they're going to need that name at the top. Stephanie McMahon holds no water to stockholders. 
It's Vince McMahon. So having him come back at this time is absolutely perfect for business. Creativity, that's going to stay with Triple H. Oh, let's hope he doesn't. Thank I mean, God. personally, if he stays out of creativity, creative, then I'm okay with it. If it's a good, if it's good for business, is what the, you said. I take him in creativity. I agree with you. You know, Aaron, I agree. <laughs> I agree again. with you. I'm not a fan of his, but if it's for the creative aspect, I'm not for it. But business, I I get it. You know. So I think we're. It seems like we're all sort of in agreement with that. That as long as he stays in the business side as a stockholder and keeps his hand off the everyday product, then I think that's a good compromise. Yes. And I would still, if I owned an indie or an upstart, Tony Khan upstart, um, <laughs> I would, I would literally say, "Come on, bring right. it on, bring your money, bring your ideas," because right. you know what, you built this machine. Without Vince McMahon, none of us would be here. Right. All right. So everyone says, "Oh, like wrestlers can't let go, and they always come back." Could you imagine being the person that created all of it and trying to just Walk cold away. turkey be like, all right, you're done. I said that I said that same thing to a friend of mine yesterday morning as we were talking about big wrestling. But you guys know my friend Rafi. Yeah. 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 Us. Mm -hmm. We were talking about it yesterday, and I said the same thing to him. You know, yet wrestlers or anybody in the business never say never, right? I mean, April, got right. you, never say never. But And I know you have some um uh i don't know if you can appear in a ring anymore but if the dollars were right and you're in a tag team with Otto, let's say in a intergender match where he's doing all the heard. heavy lifting he tags you in to get the one two three you'd probably do it i could do that you know i can't be i can't be taking hard bumps or anything but we could we could work around it and <laughs> Otto would do everything and when it's ready yeah. the team, he tags you and it's done you don't have to yeah. do it yeah. she, yeah. pineapple one two three she she was, I, know, I, I, I do I do get involved a little bit. So I I, I recently did a match with AJ Mana, who okay. used to be from Knox Pro from Rikishi's. And so we we do a little bit, but I'm out of the way, you know. So I'll get in and then I get out real quick or something. But yeah, go. I've got in a couple times, but nothing physical. But it is hard to get that taste out. And that's exactly what I was talking to Rafi about. What was that as well? So I think we're in agreement. We'll see what happens as the time goes on. It's a new year, new you know, new steps for WWE. We shall see. Rumor number two: We might actually get the return of the Hurt business, possibly with Amos. I saw his name pop in there. We saw in the background of one of the backstage segments this past week of uh, MVP was talking to was it Adam Pierce, Adam I think, Pierce. right? So Hurt business, yes, no. What do we think, Matt? Tom, is somebody jump well, in? We need the factions. What's that? And big? Lashley to me is a heel. He, he cannot be a face. Okay. What's that big tall dude? Almost. Almost. Agreed. Yeah, I read that he's he's going to become part of them. That's that. Yeah, I heard that as well. Almost. I think the herd business should come Almost. back. They didn't get their just due during the pandemic era. Mm -hmm. They were like just getting their feet under them. And then they were just like, ah, oh, never mind. We're just going to push Lashley. Screw the rest of you guys. Right. Yeah. Almost, yeah. Or, almost or almost? Um, almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> I think it's a good one. Always. Way to back. He's. <laughs> He goes heel face constantly, it seems like, but he's a better heel to and go guess, after a baby face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, sure. most likely. But makes sense. Makes sense. I like those guys. I'd like to see him come back. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Lashley, but I, I like the there. I'd like to see him come back. I hope you guys saw it. Speaking of someone from the Hurt Business, Shelton Benjamin on the main event show celebrated 20 years in yeah. the WWE, and he got a great reception when he was he, after the card was on he took the mic and let everybody know and, and the crowd really popped for him um and i agree i think you know any anybody during that pandemic era really never got their just due when no. they carried the company yeah. during that time everybody from drew and bailey to name the two then of course the hurt business and anybody else and i agree they really should i'd like to see them come back together and i'd like to see them be well received which i think they will by the yeah. crowd are, are they are they going to battle finn bauer and his group maybe I don't see, I can't see that if, if Lashley's involved and in, I think when you guys said it, I don't see them being a face faction. Yeah. Who, who yeah. would they battle then? Well, OC. OC, if they can go with AJ Styles, oh, okay. not broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, well, they'll, listen, they can always put people together at any time to yeah. make teams and whatnot, you know, so. They need a female. Who does? The good idea, Chief. Business? Yeah. Yeah. See? They yeah, good idea. Order about is oh this yeah. guy and this guy they don't talk about women april is putting her name into the hat to, into yeah. the <laughs> yeah. hey you guys i i turned 60 in a couple months so you know i don't know about getting in the ring like that a little appearance here and there okay but 
I'm a senior now, so with, with injuries. <laughs> All right, guys and gals, with that, we're up against our first break already. Wanted to say hello to everybody who is in the chat room. Uh, Ronald says, yes, the Hurt Business is best for business. Nicholas, your brother, even said hello to you. Shout out to Reg Ibera out in California. Nice to see you in the chat room. Hi, Reg. And uh, we're glad to see you in there as well. All right. I can't uh, figure out how to respond. What's that? I can't. They're saying hi, but I don't know how to respond. You're doing it right now. Just say hi. Just wave. Just no, wave. but I mean on the thing, on the chat. Oh, you can just type it back in. You can reply. Oh, okay. The bottom. Well, hi, Jennifer. Aloha. There you go. Hey, to my man Ronald down in Florida, mm -hmm. the Savannah Bananas. You better be working on it. He said he wouldn't have when we talked to him last. All right, with that, you're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere here in the new home, WWDB-TV. I'll get the phone number to call us when we come back. Don't go anywhere. More to come. I'm Miss Murder, and I have a question for you. Have you ever explored the beauty in horror? I'm Mercedes M. Yardley, known as Miss Murder. I'm a dark fantasist who wears poisonous flowers in my hair. Among my many titles, I'm the author of the stabby award-winning book titled Apocalyptic Montessa and Nuclear Lulu, A Tale of Atomic Love, as well as winning the prestigious Bram Stoker Award for my novella, Little Dead Red. My short story, Loving You Darkly, also received a Bram Stoker nomination. Check out all of my titles at www.mercedesmyardley.com, where I remind you that all things are dark. This is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200 pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long-running Vegas Unwrapped radio show, and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. Son of a bitch, Amy. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Thoughts Count Anywhere. We are in our new home, Worldwide Digital Broadcasting TV. Our phone number, give us a call on anything wrestling, Vince McMahon, Hurt Business, questions for April, 702-992-3207. We are going to bring April into the conversation. She's coming out to Vegas next month for a huge signing with Scott and his, his uh, show. However, before that, we have something very special that we'd like to call. Story time with Matt. All story time with the enforcer, Matt Law. Brother. Alright, it's been like three weeks of like crazy nonsense on Fremont Street. So I have like a hundred different stories, but... Well, just give us one. Tell me how to live my life. Hey, it's his time. Hey, he interrupts me. I interrupt him. And we have a mutual. There's a fight in the studio. Oh, that's we, a we had a. We, we have a mutual love. It went everywhere from two people jaywalking, getting killed, hitting, getting hit by a car, which is a tragedy, to a shooting oh, the next day. And then there was a stabbing two days after that, and we we're there for all that. It was a crazy couple days, but. The story time with Matt's going to be real heart attack grill related because this lady was so dumb that I thought natural selection was really going to happen like me. live in person. This lady comes up to the restaurant and was like, can I get a cheeseburger with no cheese? We're all looking at her like. That's a hamburger. Sure, why not? <laughs> She's like, well, I'm allergic to cheese. And we're like, okay. And she goes, can I also get an order of mozzarella sticks? Huh? And like three of us turn around and are like, if you're allergic what? to cheese, cheese sticks are filled with cheese. <laughs> and then she very rudely was like, I'm not allergic to mozzarella. I'm allergic to cheese. <laughs> oh, and my God. I'm going to and watch this lady die right in front of me. <laughs> oh, my God. But it didn't work. And I don't know what the hell her deal was, but She'll she ended up leaving. This later. <laughs> Hopefully she made it to the emergency room or whatever happened, but. That was just too funny. Well, there you have it. No cheese. No <laughs> cheese for that person. 
Obviously, right. he's not a Packer fan. You just tell her it's not Joe Cheese. That's right. Not the Joe Cheese. Not the Joe Cheese. Uh, Juan Hernandez, uh, we have our producer working on the possible issue as to why your phone call is not coming through. So give us a few minutes and we'll give it a try again. We appreciate it. John will have that fixed in a matter of seconds, wouldn't he? <laughs> and, and he's interacting with us, which is great. My you know, phone's working. Yes. <laughs> he's probably calling someplace else. The phone number is. The right number in there. Is the number disconnected? The phone number is PR549. That's six so far. Which of the other internet don't work? 992 3207. Call in numbers there on the screen. If you happen to be listening on the which, app, by the way, saying? want to thank you for joining us there. Please feel free to call us as well. 702 992. Three two zero seven, and we appreciate it. So, Juan, give it a couple of minutes, and let's try again. Hopefully, we can uh, we get you in there on the phone. Hey, Juan, call me on my phone. Uh, uh, <laughs> what is that going to do? Is that a phone? I'll, I'll talk to him. <laughs> the big cube. It's a big no, no, square. No, the mic. The mic will pick it up. Will it? Oh yeah. I don't want to give out Chief's phone I know number. Corey Taylor does that all the time. You can call Chief at 702-555-1212. But anyway, <laughs> B, BR549, as junior sample. All right, say. let's get to business for or a few recall. minutes at least. Okay. Uh, coming up in February, Mr. Scott, you have a show going on, and this April's coming out for it. If our producer could bring up one of those flyers at the time, go for it, sir. Absolutely. February 25th and 26th over at Sam's Town. Sports card, toys, comics, collectibles, you name it. Uh, we have a number of different sponsors, including Finley Mazda. The syndicate, and we also have uh, Impact Pro Wrestling. John, Impact you can open that up is running their nice. pay per views at Sam's Town Friday night, along with their TV taping Saturday and Sunday. Amen. Impact and us are partnering, and they're going to send up a bunch of wrestlers every couple hours, uh, you know, two at a time. Come up, sign autographs in the room, and I've uh, contacted and reached out to the lovely April to bring in some of the Glow Girls. So, April, tell yes. us about the Glow Girls coming in. Okay, well, right now, um, for the event at Samstown, it'll be myself and Roxy Astor and Sunny, the California girl. And I'm trying to get a couple of the local girls in Vegas. Um, we in Vegas, there's quite a few. There's California Doll and a Jungle Woman now is in Vegas, Nanichka's in Vegas, Susie Spirit. So I'm in contact. So I'm trying to see if we can get a few more girls. Uh, to come that are locally in Las Vegas. So we'll update that as soon as I get confirmation. But for sure, it'll be myself and Sunny, the California girl, and Roxy Astor for now. Well, that's wonderful. It's, it's yeah. great the fact that uh, you're going to participate. We're going to have a lot of wrestling fans and also collectibles fans mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily wrestling fans that might migrate over to the dark side and be wrestling fans. That's right. That's uh, cool. We're also talking to a couple of Raiders. Right now, I've been in negotiation with uh, Willie Galt, okay. former Raider. Yeah. Sure. Man, that head, head snapped around. I know. Yeah, buddy. And, and just yeah. so you know, our jungle woman used to be a raider at cheerleader. So that's why I'm kind of trying to, because Scott had said that they're going to try and get some raider guys there. So yeah, that's yeah. why I'm trying to get her. Is she's a, a raider cheerleader first, and then Glow got her. So I want, to, I want to just stop right there, because we do actually have a caller on the line. Is that right, Mr. Producer? That's what he says. Caller, thank you for calling your name. And where are you calling from, please? Hello. Hello, caller. Hello. Wow. Oh. We heard him. We hear you. Where are you calling from? Hello. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, three, three. One, two. I can hear you, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. We're still trying to work out. Stand by. The phone. Okay. Mr. Producer, let us know when we're good to go. Try it again. Was it my one? Hey, yes. Oh, okay. He usually he usually is really good and gets through all the time, even when I do my other radio show. When lines are down, for some no. reason, he can always get through. You no, know, April, we're, we're good. He's out. We got him on the phone. Now, my dude. Oh, wait. I think I hear him. Juan, is that you, sir? Hello, Juan. I think he can't hear us, John. He said he could. Okay, Juan. All right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have, well, to, figure, we'll have to we'll have to figure something out again. All right, so let's keep talking about the show in the meantime. Some more glow yes, girls yes. that were coming, Sunny, and some of the other ladies. Yes. Really the Raiders, Hello. And right? The bear, yeah. Uh, yeah. For some reason, you're not 
coming through on the on the board, and I can't figure out why. Oh, I'm from Missouri. You're coming from Missouri. That that shouldn't make a difference. You're calling on a landline or, or a um, cell phone. Cell phone. All right. Cell phone. Well, just just stand by, and, and and if you can hear them, just kind of chime in to see if we can pick you up. Okay. Okay. All right. Stand okay. Up. Thanks. And we're getting to the final negotiations. You know, the last three weeks or so, it's been a little tough getting all the people because uh, yeah, holidays, holidays and things sure, like that. Sure. So I'm in full full steam ahead. Right uh, if you're a impact ticket holder, you're going to get a free gift when you come in the door. Um, or you can get the free admission. It'll be your choice. And uh, it's just going to be fun for all. Um, and, and hopefully we're going to work out with the studio that we will actually be down there uh, live remote. Uh, during the card show, TCA yep. will be down there, and uh, Arizona will be down there as well. So uh, just give the dates one more time again, if you would, Scott. February 25th and 26th at Samstown Hotel and Casino, right off the Boulder Highway, kind of Boulder Highway in uh, Flamingo. Flamingo. And uh, definitely uh, come on down. Uh, if you're a wrestling fan, you're already going to be there chasing autographs for Impact. So just come on up to the room. Do you know? I was just going to say, do you know where within the hotel that it's going to be? It's going to be in the Ponderosa room. Okay. So if you're familiar with Samstown, you know where the arena is and the, the movie theaters. They have that. I'm sorry, this isn't park. working, and, and uh, we're going to have to try another time. time. Okay. You can try. You can try back later. Yeah. Or another or different one. Okay, yeah, tell kind of Paul call, okay? No, can hear you guys with that conversation. I don't know if it's overwhelming. Hello? All right. All right. Yeah, just tell Paul call, then. Okay. You got it. She, know, she knows who it is. Yes. Okay. Bye. I just told her to call. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Around the hotel marquee. Okay. Uh, we'll have room rates available for people coming in. So just, you know, stay tuned. Check out the uh, Power Play Sports Collectibles Facebook page and Instagram, both the same name. And uh, also, everybody here has flyers. So, yep. Yep. Uh, just want to let everybody know, you know, when you're at a new studio, at a new place, there's still some things that, that you think are ready to go. As our first caller, though, we had it, we tested it, some bruises there. So if you heard some audio in the yep. background, that was our producer talking to Juan. So, yes, that was your one, uh, April, that was okay. trying to get in on us. He said he loves you. Thank you. I love you too, Juan. <laughs> so we appreciate you, Juan, trying to get in. Again, just some of the bumps and bruises. Well, he'll have it fixed in one week. We'll not three years. <laughs> it's better than going a lot. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working. On it. I didn't say that. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That'll be no more kidding. That's Jeez, seven, eight, nine, all in a row. All right, we have uh, we have a couple of minutes before we go to our first rant of the year. So, April. You're coming in for the car show. Are you doing anything else that weekend you're here? Have any other engagements? Um, you know what? Not not so far, but I just got confirmed I'll be staying at um at the mansion in Lake Las Vegas. So I'll be close to Sam's town. So that's actually good. So you that know, means so. be at your place. What's yeah, that's what all, I mean. Friends are saying, Are we having a party at the mansion? <laughs> it's, it's my, aunt, my aunt and uncle are in town, so I will get to visit that weekend. Um, as far as anything else going on. Not that I know of, but I want to hopefully catch some uh, other local wrestling. I don't know yet if Otto's um, wrestling or some of the other girls, you know, um, Maserati is local and um, mm -hmm. just a few of the other girls. But um, I'm wanting to hopefully be in town for the next UWW. I haven't been able to to get free to, to come for that. But, you know, whenever I'm in town, I like to try and utilize my time and and you know, do as much as I can while I'm there. So well, the hopefully is, something else I'll let you guys know. But as of now, just that, just coming to well, see Scott and, and, and some of the girls going to hopefully be there. So that would be nice. I was going to say, at least the good thing is that the card show will all be under the same roof. So it'll be really Yeah, that's what's great. See us. Um, yeah. You have something that you wanted to ask and bring up to April before we went on the air about the women's programs and, and promotions around. Why right. You ask yeah. She mentioned, uh, you know, Maserati, who's come a, a long way since mm -hmm. she first started UWW. Uh, they've got WOW and uh, broadcasting out of L.A., the Genie Bus organization. Uh, April, you, you, in a nutshell, Glow started the women's Revolution. wrestling and the, the federation of women only. How do you feel about the uh, you know WOW and uh, UWW, and how do you feel being one of the founders of women's wrestling? Well, it's an honor, at least now um, that we see there's more activity in the in the women's wrestling promos. Um, 
we're finally being recognized a little bit more where they're calling us the trailblazers and the legends and that we started this. So, you know, it's it's crazy because never in my wildest dreams did I think 37 years later, we'd be here on your show talking about it, you know, or me still being out doing, you know, meet and greets and doing different shows and helping some of the indie promos, you know, get advertising by them asking me to come and, and, you know, they could put glow on their, their flyers and such, and it brings in, you know, a good crowd. So it's, it's neat. It's amazing. Um, day before yesterday, I happened to go to a local wrestling uh, here in uh, Claremont, California, and it was um, my babysitter, if you will, from back when I was nine years old. She now has her granddaughter, who is a wrestler for Colony High School in Ontario, and wow. they now have their own girls wrestling team on their high school, you know, uh, sports awesome. activity, which forward. is Come totally forward. awesome. So it's kind of like, wow, wouldn't that have been awesome if in my days they had that? But when I was young, there weren't even girl sports. I mean, I was the first girl to play boys little league baseball in the San Gabriel Valley. And I was between my two brothers. And I think I was like not eight or nine. And now look, there's girls wrestling in high school today. So it's amazing. You know, I mean, I was one of the first, actually Jeannie Hollywood. And I went to the first audition for GLOW, which was in 1985 at the Hyatt Hotel in Hollywood. And there were a thousand girls and we were the first two girls that were selected, Hollywood and then myself. So we wow. were the first two of the original 12. So it's it's an honor, you know, and it's awesome that we're able to still help promote it, um, talk about what we did 37 years ago, and then look at what wrestling is today. So my, you, know, you guys know my favorite female wrestler is Bianca Belair, but you look at all the girls today, my girl, Nikita Lyons, you know, I've been watching her since she started in WOW at 18 years and she's 23 years old. I'm hoping that she's the breakout star of 2023 and gets to the main roster. That would be awesome. You know, I mean, she was excited when she met me and wanted to take pictures with me. So we have pictures of us and I'm in my glow jacket and I'm, I came to watch her at WOW. And so I'm waiting for the day when she hits the main roster and I could say, hey, I want my pictures with you. You know, so that would be a kind of cool side by side picture to add into my book, you know. So it's exciting. It's it's really it's really fun. You know, um, we we've, we've gone to a few, you know, WrestleMania. I, I, I'm hoping to make it to WWE WrestleMania in April, which was my birthday present from Sam. We were supposed to be going to that together. So hopefully that will still be a great day. And um, I just look forward to seeing where it keeps going, you know, but I'm, I'm proud of where women's wrestling is today. And I try to stay involved and, and keep up on everything. And like right now, the thing between uh, Zoe Stark and Nikita is kind of Kind of exciting, but you know, you know which side I'm on. <laughs> and Zoe got her start here. That's right. Yep. That's right. Husband Tom Howard. Yeah. Well, so and then I wanna I wanna eventually get to you guys in Vegas to to be there for a, a day when UWW gets going because my friend um Amber, who is a referee at UWW, that's Otto von Clutch's wife. So mm -hmm. I've been wanting to get out to support her, you know. So it's exciting. I want to get there eventually. So the next I'm hoping the next show would work out with my calendar and I can get in, get to come into Vegas. I'm eventually gonna be a resident of Vegas, you guys. Oh, oh. well, you have to get I guess I have I guess I have to sh share that with you. I will eventually be retiring in Las Vegas if officially, but not sure exactly when. I am right. back with my boyfriend from 38 years ago. Wow. So, I saw, I've seen, we've seen the, some the boyfriend that I had out. right when I got glow is the reason we broke up. I got oh. the I got glow and then I moved to Vegas. And and we basically broke up because of that and he never pursued it. I didn't know he was getting ready to ask me to get married. He was gonna Ooh. Wow. So he had the ring and everything, and then we went our own ways, and we've now just uh, full circle, and a friend, our mutual friend, got everybody connected together, and so we we started talking March of this year, and so he's he's a Mr. Strongman. He's going to try and compete in his last Mr. Strongman in March of this year in Huntington Beach. So he was Mr. California in 2018, 2019. So well, we, it's going to be... We certainly know I'm that as, guys we well we we see very well watch what I'm gonna do here, fellas. She is glowing 
with all the <laughs> news that you're sharing. Is there going to be a wrestling wedding? Yeah, that's a, is it going to be in a wrestling ring when you get married? Can I? Well, can you know what? I don't know, but I'm but I'm thinking a lot. A lot of the people coming will be uh, from my wrestling family, so um, we'll see. So all he right. wants to finally get married after 38 years. So I will keep yeah. you guys posted. Please do. We'll awesome. come out and do yes. a live remote, and we'll broadcast. Yes. Okay. Sounds right. good. Uh, April, we have we have to move on. I'm gonna we're gonna say goodbye to you for now. And Thank we love you guys. You. Thank you for. I sharing. will see you guys next month. We'll see you next month at the okay. sign. Okay. Aloha. Love you. Okay. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year. Thank you. Always love hearing from April. She's always got a great energy and and great stuff to bring to the table in in her long in her long years of being in wrestling as a profession. Okay. With that, guess what? We're a few minutes behind. But for those of you not familiar with our show watching us for the first time at this point although we're about five minutes a little late because of our great conversation with april we have a segment here where the chief gets a couple of minutes to share whatever he'd like we like to call that the chief's rant and so with that mr producer let us get started with the chief's rant Don't very long yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, folks. It's the chief. My three minutes of fame is now 258. I'm going to have a little fun with the group up here this morning. April uh, started to elaborate. And, and what I'd like to do, being that it is a new year, a new studio, I want your thoughts on who's going to be the breakout wrestler in 2023. And who wants to start it? We're all ducking. <laughs> Thomas, why don't you start? Because nobody was expecting it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I put you all so on the spot. On, on any level or just WWE or? Any level, any level across the board. Okay. Thomas, you go first. I'll go with Alex Flair. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think she's going to have a great year this year. Okay. Alice Blair. Okay. Alice Blair. That's only saying that because he doesn't want to get chopped again. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, <exactly>. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. What do you think, Matt? I would say Miranda Alize is going to get signed by like a major company. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, she deserves it. Totally agree with you on I'm that one. I'm going to start a ton of controversy. <laughs> Go, Go ahead. ahead. Tessa Blanchard. She needs to get to the huge stage. Totally agree with you. So can you really count her as a breakout star, That's though, what I was going to say. Based too. under the definition of what Chief is looking for? I understand what you're saying, Scott, by saying that. Because it's off the people's radar right now. It's complete. She is completely off the radar. But she has history, though. She people know who she is. She has history. It's unwritten history. It's a bunch of bullshit. No, no, I don't mean negative. I mean the wrestling. I mean a wrestling. I mean no, no. a wrestling history of of success in the ring. Oh, well, absolutely, she's thing. got success. But and and I agree. But you know, breakout doesn't mean your first trip to the rodeo could be comeback. Okay. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Okay. We need Charlotte versus Tessa in 2023 would be epic. That's her dream match, by the way. Mm. I know. <laughs> well, Royal Rumble is a couple of weeks away. It's in San Antonio. Mr. Iron? Uh, you know, it's. I'm thinking of all the ladies we've seen over the past year going into the next year. And uh, uh, Ronald in the chat room brought up somebody that is the person that I was thinking about. And that's Lady Tapa from UWW. The, the heritage, the strength that she has, what we saw her do at UWW3. Um, I think she has a good chance sometime in this next 12 months uh, to take those bigger steps to to bigger and better things. So I think Tapa is going to be someone to be uh, looking forward to this year. She has like the strength of Nia Jax, but knows how to wrestle. Yeah. That's, you know what? That's a great way to say it. Chief? I have my personal thoughts. We've all said women. And, yeah. and Cross is already kind of a breakout and, star, so and, I'm not sure I was say. thinking that too. And Bruno, and, Bruno, we can't bring and, up, right? And here's here's yeah. my here's my here's mine. Okay. David San Martino? The four horse women. <laughs> the four horse the women. The four horse women are put together finally. 
It's a little difficult. I was say, are you, <laughs> why? This was your idea, and you said the four most over women in the last seven years are going to be breakout stars in 2023. Well, you got to consider it. It's Becky like, Lynch wait, is going to be the wait, breakout star it's, it's of like, 2023. It's like, she? it's like Mr. Scott just said. It can be anybody. Well, Charlotte's just coming back. You can't pick number Tessa, one, two, three, Tessa, and four. Tessa, Tessa, why can't I? Now my, I wonder why you put me in the Middle East too. It's my, <laughs> it's my, it's my <laughs> segment. I can Offered do. I can do whatever I want. That's like saying drink, John Cena's drink your be, energy drink. We. That's like saying need. Roman Reigns is going to be the breakout star of 2023. He might be. You don't know. You can't I go from probably. one to. Um, <laughs> what? What? Tom Crawford put in the. I need an room. adult <laughs> and a drink. Well, you're in the wrong. What? Room. You're in the wrong room. Uh, Tom Crawford put in the chat room. Uh, Jay Vidal, who that's wrestled locally, one. and I was part of Impact. He signed with yeah, Impact. Jay Vidal. That's, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good I one. Doing anyway, Becky Lynch and Charlotte. Anyway, I just breakout hey, stars. I really so wanted to have some fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the last T frame. What about Scarlett? Scarlett just had her first wrestling match last night on TV. Second okay. one. She had one on Raw. She had one on SmackDown now. That would count as a breakout, yeah. It's okay. A good thing. It's a good How about thing Scarlett? Do. You said I couldn't use Carrion. Well, what about Scarlett? Well, she hasn't really been like. That was her first TV yeah. match last night, so yeah. No, Raw was her first one. I say Sonya did. Last know. night uh, was her second uh, one. Gotcha. So you yeah. stand correct. Adam Pierce is going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, God love you, Adam. Hey, anyway, hey, by the way, Kurt Angle just had surgery, didn't he? On um, both his knees, too, right? I just saw him. so hopefully, speedy recovery. Wow, yeah, yes, both definitely. knees, yeah. Anyway, uh, seriously, folks and f crew, we're gonna be serious, no, nah. never, nah. not on the Chiefs brand. Anyway, that's the Chief over and out. <laughs> Charlotte's gonna have a good year, guys. Did our ratings just drop? <laughs> <laughs> no, they went up. We can't do this just yet, <laughs> they went up. It's interesting you bring up Charlotte because when she made her return, that was the exact topic that we were all talking about a few weeks ago, <laughs> about how she's away for so long and then immediately she comes right back and doesn't have to earn her way back up. She comes right on and Thank basically God. in a relatively squash match, I guess, if you want to call it, took the belt off of Ronda, which I think everybody's happy about, by the way. You know, really, is Ronda... Is Ronda's a better is, heel. Is Why Ronda, is she a face? Is Ronda going to go away now, though, for a while, you think? Or is she going to stay... Uh, Stay, exactly stay on TV. Contract is because yeah. or stay on TV. Well, I don't, well, I read something that um, like she's done with Charlotte and wants to go to the tag titles with Shayna. That would work. I can see that working. I can see that she couldn't take too much time off because we're about to hit WrestleMania season, yeah. and she's yeah. still a draw no matter what. That's so true. And now she got she's in that new video game that I'm sure they're going to want to keep promoting as well. Yeah. So but they do stuff like that cross promote when the movie or a video game comes out. <sighs> you know. They should if they they should do a little more. So something coming around around WrestleMania that should be released with a guy coming back in the ring or movie star. What's coming up? Could be president if he decided. Oh, uh, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the Royal Rumble poster? It's kind of hinting real strongly. Yeah, the, the lightning bolts in the background, Black Adam, and all that stuff. Why give that any traction? DC screwed that pooch. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Hey, by the way, oh, late. It's Tom Crawford. He's also suggesting the Renegade twins. They looked great last night on Rampage. We see them here at UWW. I've seen they them just a, won the tag titles here. I've seen them a couple of times on AEW. Yeah. Um, that's that's a good that's possibility, good, too. Absolutely. So there's a lot of possibilities, and we'll discuss more of them. By the way, before we go to break, and kind of remiss that we didn't do this at the top of the hour, for those who saw it, those who didn't see it, of course, uh, Monday Night Football this past week, there was a tragic incident with uh, DeMar Hamlin, uh, defensive back for the Buffalo Bills, had a situation on the field. However, great news coming out the last couple of days mm -hmm. that he's off the ventilator. He uh, uh, did a video chat with yeah. his team. He's able to communicate. So uh, from all of us here at TCA, we want to continue sending positive vibes out to DeMar Hamlin and the family and Buffalo. And let's give kudos to Cincinnati Hospital, where he's at, that was at the University of Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and the assistant Buffalo Bills trainer who immediately started with CPR. They're saying that's probably really the, oh, one yeah. of the biggest things that helped he, uh, he save his, his life. He had his pulse when he hit the ground, right. then he lost his pulse, and the, the assistant trainer did CPR and they re resuscitated him. So good for him. So looks like thus far, 
everything has been positive uh, in his recovery. We'll just hope that that will continue. You mentioned something very uh, positive. Uh, I try. We we look at teams a lot of times, and we think about the players, but yes. also and coaches. But the trainers deserve a hell of a lot yeah. of. You know, they just say, oh, you know, they they put bandages on them and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But we had that situation there. Uh, an old friend of mine, Clint Malarchuk, who was a Buffalo Sabres goaltender, had his juggler kind of on the ice. Oh, I remember and, that. And uh, the trainer literally held his throat, the pressure, yeah. um, till they got to the hospital to save his life. Happened just uh, the other day. A uh, goaltender, I think in college, had his juggler slit. Same thing. The trainer saved his life. <clears throat> hockey players. So I'm a little discouraged with the, the media on this situation because they keep saying that this is the first time it's ever happened, and it is not the first time. You've had a couple hockey players that have just skated off the ice and dropped right on the bench, mm-hmm. had to have the paddles used there. So a life is a life, and you always end the show very positively. Um I feel for this gentleman. I watched it for close to midnight. Yeah. We all were chatting about it. No. But it's not just this one player. No. Everybody in life. This gentleman here, this gentleman here. Yeah. You two. Mm-hmm. Don't forget where you came from. Don't yeah. use this as the excuse to finally get off your ass, donate to a charity, or say to your closest friend that you, that you love them. Mm-hmm. Do it every day. Yeah, definitely. On that note, let's step aside for our second break of the first hour as we are getting ready to wrap that up. Uh, You are watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200 pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer, his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long-running Vegas Unwrapped radio show, and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. One on the field. Yes, we're we're back. Back. Welcome back to Thoughts Count Anywhere. We're coming to you live from the WWDB TV studios from my digital broadcasting here in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. Almost 10 a.m. here, Pacific time. Listen, it's a great slate of football coming up this weekend and everything. A lot of stuff going on. But the topic that we have before we went to the break is one that I, I think, guys, I want to spend the rest of this, the last 10 minutes of this hour that we have. You know, Scott mentioned, and we've, it was all talked about, yes, the event we all witnessed by millions and millions of people on TV. Yep. But as you mentioned, this is not the first time. And the first two that came to mind for me when we were chatting was uh, Jerry the King Lawler suffering the heart attack yes. live on Raw, and they, they had that. The tragic loss of Owen Hart, although that I was wasn't... to say Owen Hart. That, yeah. that, was, I, that happened... I don't know if that was – was it all caught on camera? No, but we know no, what no, happened. No. But it was well reported. when well they came reported. to the ring, yes. you saw the blood. Absolutely. The so those are just two within the wrestling world that we were talking about. Now, I do want to bring up one, and Chief reminded me of this, and I'm glad he did. You know, we hear news reports of athletes, young athletes, college. You know, the summer camps get a little too hot. These people are collapsing. Well, here in Las Vegas, a 16-year-old gal, uh, part of a flag football team, right, Chief? Yep. Um situation where she collapsed and passed away and i know you have some thoughts uh to, to share on that yeah thursday night uh um playing flag football out you know a curricular activity in high school and uh 16 year old uh collapsed on the field and passed away um my heart goes out to her um you know i'm fortunate i i know what Somewhat, our Buffalo Bills player um, went through on the field because seven years ago I had a heart attack, and thank God that the uh, EMTs that got to me uh, worked on me and kept me alive till they could get me to the hospital and uh, put the three stents in me. Now. The lucky thing I hope for the young man is he won't have what I have. 
I have what's called affibulation. So my heart is constantly racing. I can't feel it. Okay, I can't feel it. I'm one. Of, I'm one of the lucky ones. Most people that have AFib, they can feel their heart fluctuating up and down and beating real fast. I can't. So uh, my, you know, something I live with. I'm okay with it. I'm on medications. I've got great cardio doctors out at the Air Force Base. I couldn't ask for better doctors, but. We don't realize, and, I, and I'm going to say it straight, we don't realize that the medical people, as, as Scott said, the, the doctors, the, the, the medical staffs, uh, the EMS people that worked on me, I, you know, when I, I got to the hospital, there was a whole team waiting there for me. And, uh, uh, they uh, they did a fantastic job. They kept me alive, and uh, you know uh, I'm grateful and uh, uh, I thank God every day that I'm alive. So thanks for this time. Yeah, uh, you know, and 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 Scott, you said it best before we went to break. You know, anything can happen at any moment, at any second, and the worst thing that can happen is, is of course, when you pass, you, your brain is not thinking, but those left behind you don't know the impact of you know when those are those who are left behind yep. you know like you just said my somebody didn't say i love you enough but i know they love me that sort of thing because you don't say i love you enough to somebody or or be kind to somebody and do something positive for somebody and and it is it's an instant it can happen like this i remember many many years ago the runner jim fix you guys remember him yeah. the runner guy was a big fitness guy ran miles and miles of, has a heart attack in the middle of a run. Go figure, right? So things do happen, and we have situations where we kind of prepared for things, hope to never use them. It's like insurance, right? We pay insurance, hope to never need the insurance, but we take CPR classes. We listen to basic first aid, really never hoping to need to use it. Well, it's just similar to my job. I'm, as everyone here knows, yes. I'm a first responder. Yes. Yep. And the problem is, you don't want to pay for the fireman. You don't want to pay for insurance until it's time for your house to be on uh, fire. Your car's, your car's in an accident. Um, I, I find it very hypocritical of our generation. Mm -hmm. I really do. That it takes a situation like this to tell each other we love them, to donate to a charity. Yep. Um, the last time I saw something like this was 9 11, and mm -hmm. we started being nice to each other. Mm -hmm. Then we became a very hateful country, which is sad. Mm -hmm. We need to take the time when somebody opens a door for you, say thank you. We need to be nice to one another because you never know when tomorrow might not come. True. You know, just smile at somebody. Exactly. Instead of car you know, carrying that Matt coward. Matt that every day. I know. Well, you listen, <laughs> practice makes perfect. Uh, because, you know, we've done some shows and we've talked about it here. We, I've talked about other shows about mental illness and wellness and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not, we're not trying to talk about suicide. I'm not trying to go down that road. But a smile, a wink. Hey, how you doing to everything? Good. Great to see you. When I go out to stores, I love striking up conversations with whoever's behind the counter or somebody standing in line just because, A, because I like to have fun with people, but you strike up a conversation, you make them smile, you, you talk about something totally senseless, and you don't know what that does for somebody else's day because you yeah. gave them two minutes of time where they were important, yeah. and you don't know how important that is in, in somebody's life. Uh, we're going to jump ahead for our last, we're going to take a break early right now because our next guest is lined up, ready to go. So. He's, his time is valuable. We want to hold, don't want to hold him much longer. So our first hour is done. With that, we're going to step aside for a break or two. When we come back, Scott, why don't you tell everybody who's coming on? The great Dave Marquez. <laughs> I think he's listening. How's that intro? <laughs> Adam Pierce couldn't do that for you. Oh, right my up. gosh. But anyway, Dave Marquez, good friend of mine for many It's years. official. It's official. <laughs> <laughs> right. He is our vice president of Wrestle Connects. He is also one of the founders and instrumental in the United Wrestling Network, Hollywood Championship Wrestling, and he will finish that resume because this gentleman, his resume is longer than any of us here at the table. I was going to say, I got a whole book in the mail with his resume, and it's about this big. So he needs three business cards just to put it all on there. <laughs> all right, with that, hour number two for TCA. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Are you looking for someone to provide training to your staff? Do you need a motivational speaker about how to handle change? 
you have an upcoming event that needs an MC to handle those responsibilities? Well, look no further than longtime Las Vegas radio personality, Aaron Phillips. I am local to Las Vegas, and I can blend my talents with any audience. For more information, please visit www.aaronphillipsvoice.com and book me for your next event or training needs. To watch it, but like you, you oh, oh, hi, welcome back. He was like, to there you go. We're, we're back on, guys. So, with oh, that, we got hi. a quick countdown. So, uh, I with that, that Mel's cooking in what they for this issue. Listen, around studios, we get quick counts around here like bad referees. Yes. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Scott so we could try again and introduce our guest. Hey, Dave, why don't you take your own intro? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the United Wrestling Network and all the stuff you're doing nationwide. And then, Tell a little bit about Russell Connects, an organization, a 501c that you and I are involved in. I figure you're the best face of our organization right now. I know him. Oh, shit. Do I owe you Do money? I owe you money? <laughs> <laughs> in these studios? Yes. Everybody owes Everybody. money. <laughs> no, we, just got, we just got paid before the show went on, so we all share money around here. Good morning, Mr. Dave. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having for me. Having and me. Uh, I'm known for exposure bucks, so I could uh, hand those to everybody. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so I'm, uh, next month I'll be celebrating, uh, 33 years in, in pro wrestling and, oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> we had to, we had to switch the headsets to hear you much clearer. Okay. Uh, I said, uh, next month I'll be celebrating 33 years in wrestling. I've uh, worked with just about everybody there is to work with. Um, and, uh, all the companies, big and small. Um, my was an owner in the NWA for, I don't know, a long time. Um, and then I helped Billy Corrigan, uh, purchase it back. And now he has it, um, uh, long history with new Japan pro wrestling and, and, uh, just scouting, uh, talent from all over the world for all these years. And a good majority of talent that you see on the network, uh, wrestling shows, uh, Came through my organization for a good while uh, before uh, getting signed and now being featured on cable uh, and internationally every week. Um, but uh, the United Wrestling Network kind of came out of necessity because uh, if you know the history of the modern NWA, uh, we lost it in a court case. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't have an acronym to uh, to promote anymore. So I invented the United Wrestling Network. <laughs> and, um, and the idea behind that was... Uh, was basically to get all the people who were left in the NWA that were quality promoters um, to still have a sanctioning body. Um, and my uh, motive has always been television production. Um, and uh, a lot of people still don't understand how that works. So we never really got that piece off the ground, even though we had a lot of promoters uh, uh, all over the world interested in, in being a part of the United Wrestling Network. So I kind of just uh, brought everything back in house and utilized my syndication uh, that we have for, at the time the show was called Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, now it's just Championship Wrestling. We consolidated uh, three broadcasts, our uh, Hollywood show, the show we do in Arizona, and the show we were doing in Atlanta, all for regional television, uh, just like territories. And um, the Hollywood show was the national show. At one time, we were on 103 TV stations across the country. Currently, we're on over 180. Um, and uh, and that's who and what I am. That's, uh, that's what I do every week. And now I didn't realize this angle was going to expose how messy my kitchen is. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, but that's really live awesome. TV, Dave. You that's should right. know that. That's right. It is. <laughs> who else has an Emmy Award sitting kitchen i mean come on well, there you go there you go especially right next to the food blender looks like i'm not sure anyway so, the, question I like, the question i like to ask is you've been around the business a long time um but how did you get started into wrestling what was your draw to wrestling as a kid what was the aha moment for you that wrestling was going to be your big part of your life um it's funny enough most people say they grew up loving wrestling well i didn't um, and I still don't, uh, but, um, <laughs> but I think, I think other factors play into that now, um, but, uh, uh, I wanted to be an animator. So growing up, I wanted to make cartoons. I wanted to make Fantasia. I wanted to make art. I wanted to do all that kind of stuff. And, you know, in the late eighties, 
computers uh, becoming what they have become uh, today, and especially in in, in movie making, um, I had never seen a computer. And I remember watching a, a Hanna Barbera special on television, and here's these two old guys, Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera, probably in their late seventies then, um, talking about computers like they, you know, like they were uh, they they invented the thing. And um, uh, I was like, wow, if these old guys know what this is. Uh, I've never even touched one. I was still on a Selectorite, you know. So. <laughs> Um, so I, I kind of went away from that and started looking at uh, TV images, but the wrestling side of it is interesting because my grandparents uh, were a part of the concessions at the Olympic auditorium. And so, uh, I was always around, uh, uh, wrestling roller derby, the concerts and stuff uh, throughout the eighties in, uh, I didn't know you were coming. Uh, that's Sean Phillips. Works for the company. Um, <laughs> and uh, 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 so I was always around it. And I think at the time it was on uh, 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 Channel 13 here, KCOP in Los Angeles, uh, Olympic Auditorium Wrestling, and or Hollywood Wrestling. And uh, so I watched the production of what was going on and seeing the television side of it as a kid. And that is what really attracted me to it. Um, and then, of course, seeing personalities like Fred Blassie and Piper and those people of that 80s era um, really caught my imagination because I was like, oh, well, these are like cartoons. This is not yeah. anything really different than making cartoons. It's still characters, it's still storytelling. Um, and so that's how I got involved. And then the aha moment <laughs> was I was working uh, uh, at an NBC station in Springfield, Missouri, and when Bob Costas, uh, his later program went off the air, we had local time. And our station manager came to us and asked, what, uh, uh, what, what, what can we do to fill the time? Because it was, you know, five days a week. And uh, everyone had ideas. Southwest Missouri State University is located there, or Missouri State now. And um, I, uh, I blurted out, well, why don't we do a studio wrestling show? <laughs> and um, I had no idea what I was talking about. And... Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, he went with it, and we did it for a little while there, and my business partners were Gordon Soley, Harley Race, and Carl Lauer. Wow. And, um, yeah. Sounded like, law, <laughs> sounded like a law firm. Talk about, <laughs> <laughs> about the ultimate shell game. Yes. Uh, <laughs> especially Carl. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, Carl, <laughs> you and I go way back with the board of an organization. <laughs> but but that, that's how I got into this, really. And um, ultimately, when the uh, station decided to cancel, uh, or not, I shouldn't say cancel the show. It was called World Legion Wrestling. Now it's it's still around. It's called World League Wrestling, still in Troy, Missouri. Um, uh, and uh, uh, NBC filled the time, so they took it away from us. And I and I thought I was fired. I, I had all these boxes on my desk when I came in because I was working for the news. <laughs> and uh, all the tapes were in there. I was like, oh, what happened? Am I, am I done? <laughs> and and they're like, no, we're just not going to run the show anymore. And it, it, it struck. I was like, oh, I own a TV wrestling company with Gordon Soley and Harley Race. Like, I'm sure I could do something with this. Sure. So across town to the Fox station. And uh, they started running the show. There you um, go. And uh, at any rate, that was the, that was the moment. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you guys shared a name. If you guys want to bring that up and bring it up to Dave. We Anybody? Shared, we shared a name? Yeah. Did you write something down for somebody? No, Dave? no. Oh, okay. I thought that was part of the question. You're a school teacher. You used to people that, cheating. That was something else. <laughs> gotcha. Anybody? Who's the next question? Anybody? Well, I'll, I'll let the, uh, Dave take this on. Uh, first of all, keeping with the wrestling broadcasting, is, it, is there anything in the future that you can share with us? Or would like to about uh, you know the the network that you have going on because you and I have talked many times but sure. you know and some things we keep to ourselves but what can you share with us? Well, um, I have a show in Memphis called Memphis Wrestling caused all kinds of problems locally but I'm used to that. Uh, <laughs> you are a controversial <laughs> person. <laughs> we've been on the air. We've been on the air for five years now in Memphis with a local show. It's it's a fantastic show. It's run by Maria and Dustin Starr. It's on CW30 there. You can also watch it on Fight every week at YouTube. 
Um, I have a show coming up next Saturday on the 14th in Mesa, Arizona at this great place called the Bell Bank Park. Uh, tickets are on sale at HollywoodWrestling.com. Um, we have Eddie Kingston, uh, Marina Shafir, Davey Richards, Clark Connors from New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ferdy Peter Avalon, Danny Rivera, our world champion. You know, I think I'm one of the only TV shows out there that includes every, I'm kind of like a Switzerland. Everyone's allowed to be on my programming, but WWE talent. So it doesn't matter if you're under contract, if you're here, you're there. There's a good chance that we're going to have them on our program. Other shows do this, too. I'm not saying I'm the only one. I'm the only one that is allowed to broadcast them, which is very unique. Um, and then a brand new show coming this spring uh, to Louisville, Kentucky. And, uh, and I believe the call letters are WBRB. They're the Fox station there. Um, and we're WB starting to be right back. <laughs> What's that? BRB, be right back. WB, right back. <laughs> you know that's right. <laughs> um, and so we have a new show starting there uh, this spring called Derby City Wrestling. And uh, it's it's uh, going to be way fun. And Danny Davis in the area uh, gave us his blessing to use his old uh, Derby City name. And, um, and so that'll be starting shortly. And uh, this is all courtesy of a wonderful sponsor we have called Car Shield. Um we have it's pretty interesting we've taken them they've told me this uh they're no, they're normally a, what's called a pi company or direct response company uh where you call the phone number and you know you get whatever information and then the, the local station gets credit for the call well i figured out how to pull money out of them <laughs> so, so i don't have to wait for the 800 number of dollars to come in uh we have an actual sponsorship and you may have seen the commercials with rick flair and i and and, and and all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, it's, it's a great time uh, for me right now, kind of in, I dare say, twilight years in wrestling because I'm looking to uh, get out of it here shortly. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be, and, and, I, and, and I'll, I'll wait for the groans because I hear this my entire life, uh, but I'll be, I'll be 50 here soon. So, uh, uh. oh yeah, you're a kid. Excuse me, sir. You're... Go, back, go back to when you turned 50 and someone told you that. <laughs> excuse me, sir. Mr. Marquez, excuse me. But uh, you're talking to the elder statesman here. I well, just, that's fine. <laughs> I just turned 70 years old. So I'm still going around having fun. I'm not going to let you quit because I oh, know... Well. No, no, because I know what kind of mind you have in the business, <laughs> and we need you. Well, thank you. That's going to take some in, uh, Davy Crockett Indian leg wrestling. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm done. I, I really, I have a really good team that we've trained. Uh, I think it's time for me to see the world for fun. I've been around the world many times with wrestling and the Walt Disney Company, and uh, uh, it's just time. It really is. I've been 33 years, as you all know, is a long time doing something yeah, every, but... every single day and having a, a real broadcast job on top of it. I mean, currently I produce a monthly MMA uh, broadcast for B uh, Bally Sports Network. We do a boxing show that goes all over the world. Um, and for a while there, for probably a good three years, because there's not many people that understand wrestling and broadcasting at the same time. So... I'm people always call on me, including Impact and New Japan and you know MLW. I was directing and producing their programming too, so it was it, it was a lot, yeah, to to really just come down. And the NWA when we launched that, and the pandemic, you know, it, it was a it was a lot. So I'm I'm luckily in the best health that I've been in in a very long time, uh, and I think part of the reason why I was in terrible health was because of all of that. <laughs> So. Dave, Dave, let me let me let me change gears on the conversation for a moment. First of all, I want to clarify that the elder statesman in this room right now is not Chief. My board operator and owner of our studio has him five years beat. So I want to correct that for for the record. Um, he doesn't count. <laughs> but he's in the room. He's part he's, of the show. He's a freaking drawhead. <laughs> oh, he don't geez. count. Anyway, uh, there's an organization called yes. there's an organization called Wrestle Connects. Well, Let's first talk of about all, that. Wrestle Connects is a 501c. And uh, it was founded by, um, unfortunately, um, late, great Howard Brody, um, Gloria, and uh, Dave, 
and myself and um, a gentleman who fired Dave, what, five, six times, Howard Brody? Howard, Howard kicked me out of the NWA the first time in 80 yeah. or 96. So God rest his soul. <laughs> That's how the wrestling business works. But uh, we traded uh, Howard Brody and his passing for Dave Marquez, and he is our vice president of WrestleConnects. It's a 501C. And Dave, you are definitely um, on board with the health insurance and things like that. And you tell us in your words, not just for me that I've sat here at the table and talked about it and how important it is, but you being absolutely in the locker room with the guys and the ladies, tell us a little bit about it. Well, what I really like about the organization is that it's here to help. And I, I, I think that once the education's out there uh, for the working uh, uh, public in wrestling, um, they'll really be on board as well. So being able to offer some sort of health insurance is, is crucial. So that's one of the reasons why I always kept a, a real job was to have that health insurance, uh, understanding, you know, the climate in our country when it, when it comes to helping one another, when it comes to medicine and, 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 uh, and, and getting treatment. And a lot of the, the performers, I think they're realizing earlier, which is good that, they're not gumby, <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not made of, of, of they're, they're just not a bouncing ball and they're going to live forever and not be hurt. So uh, in speaking to a lot of younger people, I feel that they're understanding now uh, what they need, why they need. And, and, and a bigger piece of it too is, you know, uh, a, a phrase that is, is newer uh, to the public of, of, of mental illness and mental health Um is, uh, is, is help with that too, because there's so many pieces in life and society and all of us deal with it every single day. But if there's some, someone there to help you and you could actually take care of it and pay for it and all that stuff, people be so much happier. So um, that's what I'm hoping to be able to get over to uh, uh, the wrestling community and, and to try to give this a try. And at least it's, a, it's an introduction to healthcare. Like it might not we cover everything. It may not be the the, the the ultimate best coverage, you know, but it's coverage and you can get started, uh, whether it's clinics or, you know, local facilities uh, and then, you know, figure out what you need as an individual and find your own insurance. So that's that's what I'm hoping this gets to. And and the and, and the wrestling talent understand that because a lot of them, they they need help. They understand they need help, too, which is which is a good part. Yeah, the one or the one organization that you know, what we do is we provide some help, especially to the younger talents, sure. the indie talents. But people forget that the wrestlers don't have health insurance. And the thing of it is, we're just thinking of the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. How about their families, mm -hmm. their younger children? A lot of them have, you know, small children at home. The wife might have to work to get the health insurance and things like this. This may be a stopgap, like Dave said, to a bigger and better health insurance plan. But we've made it available through WrestleConnects Health Insurance. We also have uh, um, financial insurance because, you know, as you're well aware, when people get money uh, at a young age, sometimes they don't know what to do with right, it, and right. they blow it. And you know, save for the rainy day. We mm -hmm. all hear that. We, if we all would have done that, even at our age, we right. would have been a lot better. Because sure. you know, we're naive. We're you know, you got ten dollars, you're going to spend ten dollars. Um, that, along with uh, some travel benefits, we have uh, workers advantage that help the wrestlers while they're on the road for you know, like a triple A type mm -hmm. of insurance for the car, uh, hotel benefits because you. The indie days, traveling from hotel right. to hotel, you know, get getting some discounts here and there sure help when these indie guys aren't making a lot of money. And it doesn't matter. You can be an indie guy, but you can also be, we'll call it a WWE talent. You can still join our organization because a lot of those are working on contracts mm -hmm. that don't provide that, in, you know, stuff Correct. for them. Yeah. Now, as I understand it, besides all the health benefits, which is really paramount for the performers, there are some other resources that are provided through WrestleConnect, such as practicing demos. Is that correct? Promo work, all that sort of stuff. Talk about some of the other resources that are available through WrestleConnect. Well, there, you know, we have great ambassadors who have been around a very long time, and uh, the critiques are there if you want help and 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 whatnot. Um, I don't know. I might be the only working currently working. Uh, promoter personality within our group of ambassadors uh, that deal with people daily. Um, and it's difficult because a lot of talent today, and this is nothing against them, they, uh, 
they're, they're doing what they're doing and they're not on a broadcast and they're not, you know, they're, they're not necessarily used to taking instruction. And that's what I do every week is we direct and we place people and we tell them where to, how to stand, where to stand, how to do it. If you think about it, pro wrestling, uh, is the only form of uh, entertainment that still kind of follows the old movie uh, studio practices where people are under contract, you know, the MGM days you might hear about where they control what you look like, they know what you, they control what you sound like, all that stuff. We're the only people that still do that, um, good or bad. Um, and, uh, and a lot of uh, people coming in that didn't grow up uh, within some sort of territorial or a uh, 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 real boss, you know, a Jerry Jarrett on top of you every single week. Um, uh, they're not used to it. So it takes them a long time to first trust the promoter or the producer or the director or whatever you want to call it from a TV standpoint. Um, but once they do, they're fantastic. Uh, you know, Adam Pierce is, a, is an exception because he was uh, always fantastic. But uh, someone uh, who, let's say, came in later, like a Drew Gulak or a Carl Anderson or a, a Fergal, a, a Finn Balor. Um, when I first got them, they really didn't know how to interact on camera. They didn't know who they were as a character and also an individual. A lot of these people are so young in their in their early to mid twenties. Um, they've not lived life. They've not had experiences. They've not had a let's say a car repossessed or they're, they're, they. they been, they haven't been a, they haven't been a country song. They uh, they still have the magic fridge at home with their parents. You know, just open the door and there's everything you ever want. Um, so it's it's a little difficult to to get them to understand that side of it. But once they trust you, you know, it's a great relationship. Like sure, uh, like Drew Gulak is a great example. He came to us just as a Brian Danielson, you know, grappler. And we turned him into a TV personality and then quickly, you know, got a job with the WWE and is luckily still there. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a good time. You made a, a comment there about uh, Adam Pierce. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, obviously he was your <laughs> champion for quite some time, obviously working relationship with him. How do you uh, see him today working, you know, as the general manager in the WWE? How do you think his uh, involvement has progressed? I've known Adam since the 90s, and we've worked with each other on and off. He was my champion. He was the five-time NWA world champion. Um, he was also my writing partner on the program, my producing partner for many years. And I knew he was destined for something like that. While we worked with each other closely, uh, I always felt Adam had a fear of success on that level. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know that he was offered both WWE and a power plant development contract that he declined, I believe, three times uh, during the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, and I don't know if he wanted to be the big fish in the little pond, uh, but probably more than anything to prove to himself that he could do that. And when he did become the world champion and he did travel around the world, and he did have to do his own bookings and getting himself out there, uh, whether it was Australia or Europe or Mexico or Canada. Um, I knew that he would be there. So uh, him on camera, uh, I think if there's anyone in the future that people would say I was married to, it's Adam Pierce. We did more t we did TV interviews together than I think I've done with anybody else in my career. So, you know, the Hogan Gene Okerlund thing, that was Adam and I. And uh, uh, that was a good, I don't know, probably from 99 to 08, 09. No, even beyond that. Well, but he's got, he has definitely uh, gotten in the worldwide eye with oh, the yes. WWE, oh, yes. SmackDown, Raw. But he's always had that presence. That was the great part about him. He's, he's always had a presence. Yep. And he's a big guy with a big mouth from the Midwest. <laughs> and. And, and I think that's what is key to, to make Adam work. You know, when they say the flyover states, like, you know, people say if you make it in New York, you've made it. I don't think so. I think if you've made it in Milwaukee or you've made it in, in I, uh, Iowa, you know, that's where you, that's, you know that you'll be able to continue uh, doing what you're doing. And Adam had that way back when. 
So some of the small markets, uh, yeah, like Crusher in Milwaukee. Right. Dave, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you coming on, talking a little bit about your history, talking a little bit about Russell Connects. Obviously, you and I will be on the phone. Gloria Lovell, uh, Dave Marquez, our vice president, myself, Scott Hosey, and David Buckler are all part of Russell Connects. We have some great helpers and um, not helpers, but I call them teammates. You know, we Matt does some stuff for us. Thomas, um, you guys also uh, were one big happy family. Russell Connects is a family. Reach out to Dave, myself, Gloria, David, uh, Buckler back in uh, Virginia. Uh, www.wrestleconnects.com. Log on there, Facebook, get a hold of us, join the organization, get all the experience. You know, Gloria worked for WWE in the office. David uh, Buckler has done ring announcing. Myself, I was an indie owner for a while. Um, Dave, wealth of information for 35 plus years, along with, you know, he's great at Disneyland too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dave, thanks for coming on today. You and I will talk. I'm sure we'll be in a board meeting here soon. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Have a good day, Dave. Thank you very much. All right. With that, we're going to step aside for our break of the second hour. When we come back, we're going to get into some news. Hey, we got birthdays to announce as well towards the end of the show as always. Don't go anywhere. More to come right after this. Are you looking for someone to provide training to your staff? Do you need a motivational speaker about how to handle change? Do you have an upcoming event that needs an MC to handle those responsibilities? Well, look no further than longtime Las Vegas radio personality, Aaron Phillips. I am local to Las Vegas, and I can blend my talents with any audience. For more information, please visit www.aaronphillipsvoice.com and book me for your next event or training needs. I'm Miss Murder, and I have a question for you. Have you ever explored the beauty in horror? I'm Mercedes M. Yardley, known as Miss Murder. I'm a dark fantasist who wears poisonous flowers in my hair. Among my many titles, I'm the author of the stabby award-winning book titled Apocalyptic Montessa and Nuclear Lulu, A Tale of Atomic Love, as well as winning the prestigious Bram Stoker Award for my novella, Little Dead Red. My short story, Loving You Darkly, also received a Bram Stoker nomination. Check out all of my titles at www.mercedesmyardley.com, where I remind you that all things are dark, darling. Oh, hi there. Hi there. <laughs> Jeez Louise. We got to do something about that. Welcome to Back to Thoughts Count Anywhere. Aaron Phillips, the historian Thomas Burnett. Chief, that's all we know. Chief is the chief. Mr. Scott Hosey, owner of PowerPlay Sports Collectibles, and one of the original founders of this here show. And, of course, the man at the end, he really holds it all together electronically for us, Mr. Matt Mullen. Thank you, Steve. For coming on thank you to april in the first hour we have a lot to go on for the rest of the way so uh let's turn it over matt yes chief i, I just wanted to say <clears throat> matt thank you very much for everything you do and thank you for helping us out greatly appreciate it but to you my man thank you for what you do for thoughts count anywhere no well, well said i do want to mention how's the thoughts count anywhere site because we've been doing reconstruction and so good is it up are we yeah, is it available we own, we own it now we own it now it's ours <laughs> yes go to www.thoughtscountanywhere.com we redid the site it's up and running again now like scott said now that we own it but um and we have coffee here where? we have a restroom here we have there's great, no wires on the floor. Great facilities here. This show was called New and Improved for my, a reason. My, my buddy back there. My like little, I said, you yeah, got money in your pocket. You got money in your pocket. Yeah. We all got money in our pocket. <laughs> I have three digits in my head that I want I to say and put in the way. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, going to I'm trying to be stone the line. <laughs> and I'm going to drink my drink. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Oh, go to thoughtscanywhere.com. Check it out. Of course, please hit the tab. What does it say? Shop, shop. or merchandise shop. All of our shirts are up there. We're going to get some new shirts up there. Eventually, we'll get it so that John can show you it on the computer. Maybe I can get a new shirt that matches, and I don't have to it's wear on, this wonderful shirt. It's on order. Garth and Brandon. Do you, want to bar, you, do you want to bar mine? I think Brandon and what's his face, they ought to be sponsoring the show again. Mr. Syndicate. Apparently, you got all the money. <laughs> Because you don't have a eight hundred and <laughs> no, no, I got. Five. Let me tell. Okay, wait, 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 let me say it. I will say it for the record. I have five hundred and thirty-three reasons for you to buy some goddamn shirts. How's that? <laughs> yes, number twelve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Doesn't, it, bills doesn't it feel better? 
It does, but you know what? Happy New Year's. You know, we and that's two, how I look no, at it. We have an hour and a half of good structured shit, and now we have no shit. We're, we're back to what we normally do. We're losing it again. We're right, exactly. <laughs> Matt, pick a topic. Let's talk about it. Oh, shit. Hold on. I got to put They my said Triple H on. was going to get rid of all the oh. theme pay per views yeah. next year, but then they announced that the Money in the Bank pay per view is going to be in London, England at the O2 Arena in July of this year. So I don't think the theme pay per views are going anywhere, apparently. I've always Good. hated the theme pay per views because not every match fits the theme. I guess that's like the one that can stick because it's like such a gimmick match that it's like its own thing, but like the Hell in the Cell pay per view really needs to go away. Yeah, I think like that's... those kind of ones, like the matches that like end a feud like permanently, those need to just happen when like they naturally are going to happen. Not well, why don't they just like Hell in the Cell? Why don't they keep the pay per view and that's the the not all the matches need to be in the hell in the cell. No. You know, maybe the last match. The, the problem is everything's got to be over dramatized in, in now in wrestling. And I blame Mick Foley for that. Real mm, simple. Interesting. If it wasn't for what 30 years ago now or something like that, him coming off the top of the steel cage mm. created a whole new what are we waiting for? Right. The fans, the which is us. The big spot. What's next? Right. They got to do better. You know, how about the the Ground and pound grappling style. Mm -hmm. You know, you're missing that with um, uh, Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Karrion Cross yep. does a lot of ground and pound stuff in the MMA stuff. Um, if you think about it, Ronda Rousey does a lot of that ground and pound and, you know, holds and things like that. And the fans are just waiting for the blood, mm -hmm. the over the top thing. The flip, fans, I'm going to tell you something. Shit. The flippy shit. Get back to the basics. And enjoy the storylines versus the high spots. G Scoop in there. Thank you, Scoop, for putting this in there. Hell in a Cell, as an example, should be a true blow-off sure. type of match. That's what it should be. It's like back in the day, you were like Shawn Michaels and Triple H or somebody like right. feuding. And then be like, we're going to end this in a Hell in a Cell. And you're like, holy crap, they're going to be a Hell in right. a Cell match. Right. Now you're just like, it's we July. I wonder who's going to be in the Hell in a Cell match this year. Right. Right. Absolutely. Now it's just like expected. Yeah. Absolutely. Thomas, pick a topic. I didn't mean to wake you up over here. <laughs> William Regal back in WWE. William Regal back with back in the fold. Not happy with AEW. We know what happened when he was taken off TV with MJF. Um, obviously, I think it's going to be a good move. Yes, it's a very good move. He can help backstage and down in Orlando, the Turning Center. Okay, Scott. I've been saying this since AEW started. <laughs> Okay, are they are they still trending that way? Looking at TV numbers or things like if that. If you look at okay, every fan out there that's watching this show, mm -hmm. Goo Goo Gaga, you love AEW. Oh my God, it's a rose kiss, peanut butter and jelly. No, <laughs> stop. The organization sucks. The only place, the only person hurt holding that place together right now is Chris Jericho. The thing of it is, Tony Khan, he is a mark boy. He's spending daddy's money, very similar to Ted Turner. Mm -hmm. When he started, oh, I got wrestling. Okay. Mm -hmm. It went downhill. Ask Ric Flair, ask Sting, anybody that worked right. for WCW. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Stings in AEW. He went for the money. Right. He's got to do something, you know, whoop sure. over his head, food on sure. the table. Um, get over it. The locker room is a mess. Mm -hmm. You know, CM Punk, right, wrong, or indifferent, that was a bomb waiting to go off. Mm -hmm. But Tony Khan was a fan mark, right. a fanboy. Mm -hmm. Stop. AEW is nothing but. I would call it ECW light. Everything's got to be gore and blood mm -hmm. and guts now. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the true arena numbers, not what's publicized, oh, we're sold out. Yeah, if you have 10 seats, you're going to sell out. Um, <laughs> if you look at what's really happening, half right. the arenas are empty. Right. The TV numbers are not there. They're not making money. Mm -hmm. They're hemorrhaging money. Mm -hmm. So stop. Once again, the machine is still running wrestling. Mm -hmm. And they're jumping ship and going back. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys are going back. You know, so when you think about it, who's going to win at the end? Vince. Right. Chief, your thoughts on William Regal coming back in the status of <coughs> wrestling today with WWE, AEW? I think one of the best creative minds in the wrestling business. Uh, Lord William Regal, as he is known. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad to see it. And, and as uh, our guest, Mr. Marquez, alluded to earlier, um, you have to have great people backstage that know how to 
um, help youngsters with uh, uh, in front of the screen, how to do a interview, wrestling, how to set up their matches. This is one of the best minds in the business that's come back to WWE. And I think with you, you said it with him helping um, the backstage helping, but the talent's got to listen. Yes. Get yes. off your high horse. Yes. You are not the best, Britt Baker. Yes. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. She doesn't listen to her shit. And where is she now? Uh, doing dentistry work, well, I think. <laughs> thank, thank God you got an education yeah. because your stock has dropped quite a bit. Sure. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's move on. Chief, pick a topic when they're off the list. You can even pick something off the back if you'd like. I'm surprised no one has brought it up as of yet. Oh, Hold cool. on. I got to ruffle papers. Uh, no, you know what? I, I'm, I've got well, one. Stuck. I've got, I've much. got one. I, I want to go, go out right now and say one of the matches for the year, mm -hmm. Samoa Joe against Darby Allen. Now there was some flippy shit in that match by Darby. Darby's known for the, is it called the coffin drop, I believe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to tell you what, there was a lot of wrestling moves in that ring. And I enjoyed it. It was, it was an enjoyable match. And matches need to be like that to draw the wrestling crowd in to watch the shows and to go to the arenas when the, when the shows come into your area. All right? And um, I just think that's, that's what we need to do. You know, we're going to have impact out here next month. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, I want to see some wrestling. I don't they, want to see. They have some of the best wrestling programs. Thank you. They, they need Thank better, you. They just need a better TV platform. You know, you knew exactly where I was going with it. So along that line, though, so yes, let me sir. get your opinion on this. Uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, whatever. You challenged want to call MJF it. to a one-hour match. I don't think MJF's got the cardio. Okay, I think he's going to blow up. Personally, myself. Okay. I don't think well, the fans have this attention span to watch now one hour at Broadway anymore. So what could be in that match that would keep the attention of the fans Blood. for even clo even yeah. close to an hour, Blood. even close to thirty minutes? Look, okay. They they can't focus on the storyline now. So I want <coughs> I want to go back to something that was said when AEW started. They said we're going to be doing things different. Records are going to matter. This and that and the other thing. What have they done different? They got other records because there was pushback on it. Right. So to me, they haven't done anything different other than more blood and and that and that sort of stuff. But what have they really done different than WWE or Impact or these other markets that they said we're going to be doing things differently? Nothing really. They really haven't, right? No. As as somebody alluded to earlier, blackout curtains work wonders. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. No, no digital work there. One thing that I want to bring up, guys, is Sasha Banks. Now, uh, uh, Mercedes Monet uh, made her NJPW uh, uh, arrival this past week. Thoughts on her appearance? I'm not a fan of the hair. I will say that first. I hate the hair. That looks so Worst scary. kept secret in wrestling. Yeah, right? she we all knew she was coming. Move. But she literally botched her first move, which was hilarious to me. But yeah, nerves. You think? She's been on bigger stages than this. Like you've been in WrestleMania already, so you shouldn't be nervous for that. But she's going to implode. I give it three months. Mm -hmm. The reason being is she's an egomaniac. I've mm -hmm. had dealings with her. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, she feeds off the crowd. Mm -hmm. And there was and no, there's no and Japanese crowd. crowds. And Japanese crowds. You you sit on your hands. Right. It's just the culture. Right. And, and they're not as familiar or not as women's wrestling there is not like it is here in terms of often. And so there was very little reaction when she was injured, you know, made her appearance started, down the ramp. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you go into Corrigan Hall and there's 50,000 people there, and as Scott said, they're sitting on their hands, you know, they, they clap at the introduction, they clap at the end of the match, mm -hmm. but while the match the is culture, going on, yeah. exactly. That so that's weird. exactly it's, right. You can hear a pin drop. Yes, sir. And she can't, she's got to hear the, her, her mental aspect is she's got to feed off that crowd. She always has because that's what she was taught here in the States. 
So she's going to crash and burn over there, especially with the attitude. She's going over with the I'm higher than a horse. And over there, I'm sorry, I'm Asian. Right. The culture of women over Very there is different. Co completely different. Absolutely. Tom well, puts do you think she's going to start doing this smack the tarry in the States so they can get the fan reaction? Oh, absolutely. That's the only reason is they paid her some money and they got to get something out of it. Right. So they're going to have the, the match here in the States. And, I mean, those are the only two named women that really – have any draw so you immediately uh, it's very similar to charlotte right up to the right, maid you know right she named he hasn't had a match in what a year yeah almost a year yeah. yeah two comments in the chat room i want to share tom crawford says he likes aew because it's grittier than wwe he also likes how they elude to other promotions within their promos and such which by the way there was no eluding last night one of the promos actually mentioned it's a fan and william hudson shares and i like this comment the best broadway match with those two is going to equal 27 minutes of armbar 30 minutes of chin locks and three minutes of action. <laughs> well, going back Chief's, to Tom, Tom. That's Chief's dream match right there. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I guess referee will be Bruno from beyond. Hey, hey. <laughs> the problem with Tom's answer right there, and mm -hmm. love you, Tom, but What's AEW wasn't the first to start that. Who shot the first uh, little comment? Who? What's In the war between the two of them? Yeah. What's gritty? Was it Vince? Triple H. We might buy your piss ad organization. Oh, yes, that's so right. The whole thing, that's yeah. right. Huh? So Which great. they shot the first shot. More, more the, wrestling, more, yeah. more of the wrestling stuff, uh, you know, more grounded pound sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. But that sort of plays back into something that you talked about when AEW first appeared as to whether a conspiracy, so to speak, you exists between AEW and WWE. And really, Vince is kind of running things behind the scenes for AEW. Maybe that went away. That was, <laughs> Made the merger of Ring of Honor and AEW. That's right. That's right. So that was something you had talked about yeah. when they first when they first jumped in. But I mean, now there was also talk. Naomi's not going to be coming back to WWE. She may be showing up somewhere else uh, as another result of the two of them walking out. They did show that like WWE finally acknowledged her exit and put her on the alumni section of the website. Oh, yeah. Naomi. Naomi is still yeah. listed as an active oh. member of the roster. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I, I would be very surprised. I mean, she walks away. I mean, her husband is. If she bad. doesn't she end got, up in the bloodline, she, she got some bad juju of. Come on, yeah, da, 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 da. And, like Vince McMahon yeah. got bad advice, yeah. supposedly, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you, Naomi, she should have just. Why you listen to Sasha is beyond me. You you were a tag team champion. You were getting play when before you weren't. Mm -hmm. You know, you were kind of after mm -hmm. the you know, Soros stuff went away, she right. kind of went away. Um, and you're ma married to one of the Usos. Stay there, keep your mouth shut, and just do what you're told. That's called mm -hmm. job in America, people. Yeah. Security, job security. Job when security. You, got those people. you know, yep. we, we've talked about Sasha and Naomi um, going away, and, and supposedly Sasha giving Naomi the bad Advice. Advice. Naomi's married into a um, the bloodline. We know that yeah. a, a, a well, a, a great family line. Mm -hmm. I do not understand why, um, and, I, and I'll just say it, why Rikishi never gave her, or maybe he did, advice. Or why she didn't go to her husband and then to her father-in-law and, and talk about the situation. Very similar to some of the people I work with in my other world. Yes. Is sometimes you got to let people fail because they don't listen. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. you, you got you. sometimes you just got to let them fail and okay. learn on their own. <clears throat> okay. and, and something, Chief, that you always say in our conversations, in what you just brought up, how do we know that didn't happen? Yeah, exactly. And at the spur of the moment, Naomi went in and just followed, you know, uh, it was just a spur the of the moment emotional decision, exactly. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But her husband had to learn the same exact thing. Right. Yeah. Because exactly. he didn't like necessarily walk out, but he's made a lot of dumb decisions himself that he's had to yeah, they work through. And, yeah. and, and hopefully, that, he's, hopefully he's correcting. If not, there's somebody standing next to him that'll take his spot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, some wanna, big, some big guy. Yeah, yeah. I want to let. The, I want to talk about the next topic. It was one that kind of started before we went on our couple I of weeks we break. Jumping the ring. We are. So I'm going to go to another topic. Oh, another. I, you said next. I'm thinking, well, where the hell is he at on the run? Mandy Rose, as we all know, uh, was released <laughs> from the company, 
Uh, had, what did she make? Like a half a million dollars that first day on her, yeah. we'll just call it her only fans type. Oh, is it fan time or something? Yeah, fan time. Something like that. I only look for the articles. But um, yeah. So Thomas knew that way too fast. Uh, <laughs> her no fans. Here, it's right here. <laughs> her, her no, do you want to see it? <laughs> her no fans website. That's right. Her no fans website. Do we think she'll come back to wrestling? Does she really need to at this point? How much more can she be over than she is right now versus coming back into wrestling, AEW or wherever? Maybe she comes back to WWE night. Who knows? Maybe Does she six, really need to? Maybe six months from now, once everything dies down. Okay. With Vince back, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss My Ass Club has been reopened. Uh, Chief, <laughs> he took your line. I think she'll be back just because, like, even though she's making, like, over a million dollars now doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, she's still an athlete performing in front of a crowd, and she's gonna she's gonna miss it at some point. Isn't she really performing now on her page, but a whole different level of performance? Sorry, Kiggity. Let me let me, uh, let, let me go. Let yes, me sir. Go here, please. Uh, Did you take your heart medicine before I start so yeah. posting pictures? I don't. I don't care about her website or anything. Oh, I, I, oh. I've never looked at it. Nor do oh, I. Shit. Care to look at it? So, uh, all lies. Suck it up, Buttercup. Uh, anyway, I, only I, look at I think I think in uh, um, as far as a professional wrestler, I don't think we've seen as far as Mandy can go as a wrestler. I, you know, hey, if women want to show their bodies, they show their bodies. Well, I, who cares? I don't. Okay, um, but I think as a wrestler. True Navy man. As a female wrestler, um, I think she's got a lot more to show on the big screen, whether it's WWE, whether it's AEW, whether it's even Impact. It could be ROH. I don't care. But I'd like to see her come back as a wrestler. Isn't CES and AVN in town? <laughs> Yeah, well, CES is. CES, right okay. oh, yeah. you know that. Okay. No, <laughs> I read, I read CES is in. The other one comes in a couple like, I weeks. Switch badges, it my bad. Because they're doing. They're doing. Uh, do but me. <laughs> Liz is doing. Her company's doing work for him. Let's so yeah, see. they'll be in there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. just say like I'm hand delivering Mandy Rose's flyer <laughs> to her. <laughs> Oh, let's not talk about delivering watch. flyers and signature things. No, uh, let's no, just say no. ABN, ABN comes in behind CES. We'll just leave it at that. Um, on the back side. On the back side. Thank you. Brandy says mud wrestling under OnlyFans will bring the biggest <laughs> title back. <laughs> for for Only me. Oh, I guess ABN is here also. I thought they were there at the same time. I thought yeah, they, they're here at the same. I thought oh, they were new. at the same time years ago. I what? used to have uh, CES badges. Yeah, so uh, I was sure ABN came like man. a week or two later. Seriously, ABN I used to. Was, come, was. Well, whatever. What, one's at one end of the hall, and the other one's at. I the guess end. when you're computer geek, you got to find something to do afterwards. Yeah, I guess all electronic stuff. <laughs> um, but you, you know, your your point is right. I, I I don't know. I don't think she has to come back to wrestling because how much more over can she be? I mean, I, I wrestling is all about getting over to help get the money. Yes. Yeah. I think and, and merchandise. I think if you guys I think if she about. comes back. She's got to go to the main roster. Oh, absolutely. She, you know, if she's going back to WWE. Yeah. Ronald uh, asked us in the chat room to talk about Alexa Bliss. Nobody cares what you want, Ronald. <laughs> Do we have to? Brandy's even in the chat What's room. What's wrong with Alexa Bliss? She Do we have to talk about show. her, man? I know. I, don't, <laughs> I just, I am, I am, I am going to. Okay, Ronald. What's best for our listeners? They wanted to, Ronald asked about Alexa Bliss. That's which, I mean, let's. Part, that's only one person. We but but that he doing. follows us, so. He's going to be my agent. Leave him shut alone. Up. Alexa Bliss, I'll have you start off the conversation with what we've been seeing, especially after Monday night, what, what happened with, between her and Bel Air. It's kind of cool, like the character work she's doing again. I don't know if I necessarily want to see her with Bray Wyatt again, because we've already seen it. I was really hoping she was going to walk out champion on Monday. So when like the people with like the mask started popping up and then the Bray Wyatt thing, I was like, crap, she ain't going to win, but let's see what happens with this. And then she snapped and... Just took out Bianca Belair quickly. But she's like good at what she does. So I kind of want to see where it goes. You know, I, what I, the hell are you giggling about? I don't understand. Ronald, Ronald is, I don't, Ronald's fired him. I don't understand why. Uh, <laughs> and I agree with you, Matt. I don't understand why they would bring Bray back into the fold with uh, Alexa. 
I mean, it worked last time, so they're like, uh, it's was broken, great. don't fix it. It was but great, but, you know, you do it with somebody else. they've brought Brave, what, Brave back now. And all hope. the puppets have got to have lives. They're all going to come back to life in different characters. Uh, Uncle Howdy. I want to know who that is. So, uh, <laughs> that's what I Sorry, thought. That, that's what that, I that, thought. What did you say? And, 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 nothing. And then I didn't hear what you called them. Yeah. You know, Bo Dallas. Well, he grew a lot of hair. If that's him, right? All no. that beard, all that that gray beard, and everything. Unless that's attached to the mask, it is. Is that part of the mask? Yeah. He's been gone. I'm not, I, I know talking well, about saw, growing hair is well, an issue, but <laughs> I got to wear a count so. You know, he he thinks wrestlers uh, hang out cover stuff. backstage and and they're eating all the time and everything. You know, they they have other lives, man. I, I honestly He's think going, you know, what, Liv Morgan's years? going to be part of a little faction with Bray, yeah. Alexa. That I can see, but because I, I personally would Bo. like to see. I agree the separation. I think Alexa should be on or Alexa should be on yeah. at this time. It's it's enough already with with the Bray connection. Hey, okay. <clears throat> Talking real quick, mm -hmm. a different subject. You? We brought up we brought up we brought up earlier about Omos and and Bobby Lashley yes. in that faction. Mm -hmm. They're going to need a female in that faction. If they go up against uh, what's her name, yeah, I agree with that. And I'm just thinking, I just just putting it out there. We don't have to discuss it now. Who would be the female that would fit into that faction? Let's make a note of that for next week, shall we, please? Because you know why we're Get running out of time. It's, it's quarter to quarter to the hour, which means it's time. Else. Happy birthday for some birthdays. Happy birthday to, to you. you. Okay. Happy birthday. So as always, we want, we're going to be using, uh, is that birthday, song going to be able to be used, I sent you? All right. Our happy birthday song that you'll be hearing in the background is brought to you by Pocket Aces. We have two weeks of birthdays to celebrate and bring along, so we're going to start with the first of the year. Chief did his homework. Chief did very well, and I appreciate it. Went to it. a website and wrote it down. Yes, I did. <laughs> why, why are we getting feedback? Is, is that for the song? That's definitely. Because we're hearing feedback. Here it comes. Okay, i got to wait. Ray's on SmackDown and Bliss is on Raw, so putting it together doesn't make sense, according to Ronald. Welcome to WWE Creative. Let me know when we're ready to go there, Mr. Producer. How about now? All right, there you go. Here's celebrating birthday. January 1st. So if you're keeping in the new year, you celebrated with Rodney, Kimberly Page, Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South. Nobody in the wrestling industry was apparently born on January 2nd. January 3rd, the great Jim Ross, Dean Hart. And New Jack. January 4th, Jim Powers Canyon. January 5th, although my grandmother is no longer with us, happy birthday to her because there's nobody that was born in the wrestling world on that day, so we'll fill that in. January 6th, Lud Wait a second, is this? Yeah. My lovely wife. Well, we didn't know that. Happy birthday. Yeah. Birthdays, we got to know this yeah, absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. All right, well, there you go. Happy birthday. January 6th, Ludwig Borga. Jacqueline, Omari, Conan, Moondog Spotlight, well, remember those. Taru Tanaka, the great professor, right? January 7th, Chavo Guerrero Sr., Alicia Edwards, the newly crowned TNT champion Darby Allen, Mercedes Steele, and C.W. Anderson. Now we turn our attention to January 8th for the upcoming week. I got to save that for next week, don't I? No, that's coming up, isn't it? I got all thrown off. You know why? It's my wedding anniversary tomorrow. 34 years, January 8th, to my wife. Absolutely. Putting up with him. How you, you get it? You ain't shit, man. He hides it in the garage. That's right. I'm not going to fill in what? <laughs> January 8th, Bushwhacker Luke, Bull Nakano, Chris Masters. January 9th, Todd Grisham, Ruby Riot, or Ruby Soho, as you may know her. Silver King, Volano the fifth, thank you for putting the five next to the room. You're, no more. you're I appreciate welcome. That. You're welcome. <laughs> sure. Chris and, you're, Walker, and you're a school teacher. Okay. Well, we don't teach Latin. <clears throat> uh, January 10th, Buff Bagwell, Grandmaster Sexay, Tamina Snuka. January 12th, Luna Vashon, Big Dick Dudley. No comment. January 13th, Shad Takahashi, Mason Ryan, Bruce Hart, and John Kronos. January 14th, let's give it up for, oh, oh. Well, I saw Jim Duggan, Matt Riddle, Casey Catanzaro, Snitsky, Ernest the Cat Miller, and what do we have? J oh, January 11th was pushed over. I'm sorry, I skipped that. King Mo, Gory Guerrero, 
and Abdullah the Butcher. So once again, happy birthday to all of you celebrating a birthday this past week, upcoming week, with all these great people. So Brandy's uh, father, rest in peace. Oh, and that was his definitely. birthday? Oh, okay. Yep. January 12th was your dad's. Yes, may he rest in peace, but let's acknowledge dad. Even though somebody may not be with us, yep. there's still no reason that we shouldn't acknowledge them on their birthday because it reminds them we are still thinking of those people and there's nothing, hey, we nothing still wrong celebrate with that. Jesus. Well, Speak for yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, all right. Very so, again, little, birthdays. Little, Thank you, Chief, for yeah. giving us two weeks of birthdays. We appreciate that. You hey, by the way, sure. real quickly, before we go into, I guess, really down to pop culture, speaking of which, one of my favorite Italian restaurants, Marsigliano's Pizzeria on Sahara and Cimarron, I think we've spoken about it. I, I don't know if we've – has anybody been there yet? No. Well, we got to go. I live by there. But, all right. That's you're it. Buying? Sure, I'll buy. That's fine. Whoa. That's on video. <laughs> you can't take that back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know I'll what? I'll flip that. He buys everything. Internet, uh, AC power. <laughs> Keep all sharp sharp objects away from me at this point. He halfway um, owns another studio. Halfway? <laughs> halfway? Cameras. <laughs> But soundboards. We, we triple the wires in this studio like we do at the other. No, we don't. Yeah, soundboards. Our producer did. He does. Chief doesn't. No. As I was saying, <laughs> I don't trip over wires. Uh, on the corner of Sahara and Cimarron, they're going to be on Guy Fieri's Diners, uh, Diners, Drive-In and Dives, the national TV show, cool. uh, Friday, January twenty seventh at nine p.m. locally. And I bring that up because I'm trying to coax him to be a sponsor, guys. Anyway, they're the greatest Italian food in Las Vegas. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and they like sports memorabilia. Too. That's right. I'm going there right now. Let's go. Let's order and have it delivered. Uh, but yeah, great pizzeria, Richie. Uh, by the way, Richie got married yesterday, so congratulations! Congratulations! congratulations. Uh, Sucker. <laughs> Not too late to annul it. <laughs> got forty-eight hours. <laughs> Is there, it's downtown courthouse. Uh, absolutely. Anyway, Richie, <laughs> we love you and great job. That uh, you know, he went through like a three or four month process. You, do. you, you go through months of process. What of, those, those those shows are staged? Heavens, no, never. What's really, Con stars with Mick Foley? What's really? <laughs> yeah, that guy who appeared with Mick Foley. They brought his mask in. What a geek that guy I know. was. I wonder where he got it from. I have no idea. I wonder if he'd sell it for a hundred bucks. Put the mask in. I don't Ask know, me you? if I ever owned it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of upcoming shows, I got yeah. something to tell you guys after the show because I can't really say it on the air. Is it a Mandy Rose show? One on one show. That, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, I'm sitting over here, my chief. <laughs> <laughs> Hands on the table. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Now you've piqued the curiosity there, Mr. Matt. And you know what the worst thing to do is like that's like having a wife that starts telling you a story, but says, No, I'll tell you later. What came in that I, Amazon package? I do that all the time. <laughs> No, half of it's right here on the table. <laughs> I, 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 I do that all the time. Oh my it's god! My this is saying involves A and E, Las Vegas, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, okay. It's one of my three quarters half hammers kids. And my ex ex exactly. Yeah. Three. Did you I, see Liz was in? The, I did, in the and I responded to her and said hello too. You've been very good since she's been in there. Yeah, well, I don't know if she's still in there or not. I don't know, and I ain't she taking, and I ain't taking no chances. chances. <laughs> She, she got off the air so she knows Thomas on one side, I'm on the That's other. It. Okay, he's in safe hands. <laughs> yes, and by the way, that was strategically done by yours truly. So, anyway, all right, let's go into some. Uh, and it's great. Culture. We appreciate it. Yes. Trust me, absolutely. Uh, more than you know. All right, we talked about the more Helen. Uh, yes. Dana White, obviously, mm -hmm. in a little little uh, uh, issue with his fiance, girlfriend, whatever his it was. Wife. It's his wife of like thirty years. Well, I don't send him a hot anniversary card. He doesn't send me one, so I don't track his wedding. So. <laughs> So what was it about? They were him and his wife. It was 26 years actually. Him and his wife were at a New Year's Eve party. I don't know where it was, but they get on like a heated argument, like above the dance floor in a little VIP section. And she slapped him and he turned around, like, what did you just do? And turned around and slapped her, which ended up on video, and all the Dana White haters are going, they're having a field day with this. And plus to put the the kibosh on a Show on well, he also has like we talked about power it. slap promotion. That's that's a hell of a way to promote your <laughs> slapping competition, slapping people. But but then it got it's under. already been taken off the air by TBS, <laughs> right? Wasn't Jeff oh, Jarrett always called somebody slap nuts or yeah. something? Uh, it's already off, they're not doing it anymore. Huh? No, I'm sure it's gonna get picked up somewhere else after the heat blows over, but, probably. But anyway. <laughs> 
Super Bowl picks. Let's let's switch gears. I know it's early. We haven't. How started quick before the Jet Giants get eliminated? I don't care. They're in the playoffs. <laughs> They're in the playoffs. That's all. That's all I was pointing to. Raiders didn't make it. Who else didn't? You know the other teams that we were talking Rams. about. Rams. Rams didn't make it. Green Bay. Somebody else. They, they it's yeah. not in no, yet. They're still in. I know, man, but they're not in yet. That's like one of those we win, twelve teams have to lose, and the moves. Coming from somebody's already in the playoffs. That's, right. That's why I enjoyed the conversation yesterday. And this weekend I watch football with no trepidations. I can just enjoy the games for the game's sake. But seriously. You know, obviously, with what happened Monday night, the AFC playoff uh, uh, steps have been changed potentially. But let's make some early Super Bowl predictions. Let's just go to the two teams that will be in the Super Bowl, NFC. And let's start with the NFC. Who do you think? Well, I know who I'm talking to here. But seriously, who I think it's still going to be the 49ers and the Bills in the Super Bowl. Okay. I think the Bills got a lot to play for just for DeMar Hamlin. They got to – I think they're going to do it for him. They're going to turn it up a notch and – they're going to blow out everybody in the AFC quickly. Okay. I wasn't expecting the 49ers to be as good as they are, honestly. Garoppolo now. may come back for the playoffs, I read this morning. Yeah. Keep them out. Keep keep going with Purdy. Yeah, you might as well. You might, you might as well. Purdy's looking pretty, so keep him in while he's <laughs> Not bad for while the last going. They're irrelevant, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Scott? Yeah, you know, everybody wants to say the Bills. Uh, I think their mind is completely elsewhere. I mm -hmm. think it's a, a reverse effect. So my uh, AFC choice would be the Chiefs. You know, they're, yeah. they are a machine. <laughs> yeah, there's a comment. And the other part is uh, the NFC. I never want to bet against this man. I think Buccaneers Brady, no. might sneak back into this. Every time anybody bets against him, you look stupid. He turns something on in the playoffs, and it's scary. Absolutely, yeah. especially when he gets close to the playoffs now that they're in as well. One to, one to I just want the Buccaneers. I want Garoppolo to come back to get to the Buccaneers. For Garoppolo to be to Brady. Be, be Brady. That's all I want to see. Chief, your thoughts on the Super Bowl team uh, matchup? I think uh, with Jalen Hurts coming back this weekend for <clears throat> Philadelphia, I like the Eagles in the NFC. Okay. Uh, the AFC, uh, I like the Houston Texans. <laughs> <laughs> That's right up there with this. Becky Lynch is going to be the 2023 <laughs> breakout star of the year. Yes. Ronald shares in the chat room. He's picked the Buccaneers from the NFC. Brandy says that she's pulling for the Bills because of what happened this year and, and doing it for the sure. bar. And Brandy also says F Tom Brady. But anyway, I, I, we know who you're <laughs> got. Uh Seriously, though, yes. I, I agree with this man. I think the Chiefs is the course. Yes. <laughs> It'll be uh, the breakout star of the Super Bowl. Jason and Chiefs' favorite I, answer. I, I think, agree with Scott. I think Kansas City. Um, <laughs> There's no reason to bet against them. Because for sure, you know, they've, they've got the track record of, of doing what they've Their done. Their coach's name is Andy <clears throat> Reid, right? Correct. No. Reid retired. Because he coach in Kansas City. Didn't Andy Reid retire? No. 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 I thought he retired. <laughs> Hello. He was there last week. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to help him. <laughs> I know. <out>. It's just, <laughs> I, I, all right, we're down so to a couple carry, minutes. Carry on. I, I was thinking the Buccaneers. I was on the oh, Tom Bruce, Brady. You're talking about Bruce Arians. Well, well, you know, the Chiefs are in town, and they play in like an hour. <laughs> Bruce Arians, although he's not coaching, he's like a consultant for the team. Right. So, yeah. Like Drew Brees with uh, Purdue. Yes. yes. All right, we know who you're picking for the AFC. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Give me an NFC. I think we made the Red Hot team in the NFC right now. Okay. NFC, so he's your Packers your dirty and mouth. Bills. Yeah. Okay. What did she say? I said, shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised none of you even thought about Cincinnati for the AFC side. Because they went, <laughs> they went to the Super Bowl. Wow. Last for year. a team that stood up and, and right, supported yeah, Exactly. Your, wow. Exactly. So what they should have done is get your ass back on the field. We're going to kick it now. You know. <laughs> oh, what to now anyway. We can throw across the middle. There's no safety. Oh, I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think if Hamlin was still Send in my the emails to Scott, Ash. Jesus, <laughs> I think it's through a... Cincinnati, the team and the coach that went to bat for your team. He even visited him in the. My God, that's right. I think that's the Bills would have been a lot more trouble if like Hamlin was still like unconscious, not knowing what was going to happen. But now that he's awake and like videoing the team, they have like the motivation. Absolutely, I think that I think, and and I hear what Scott's saying because emotionally. You're down. 
you hope for good news, you're here, you're down and now, but you still got to get back into that routine. So I could see how it's a negative effect. I think it's going to be a positive effect. Though. Like even that game when they said they were going to like suspend it for five minutes and playing. It. They were done. And like the whole team's crying. I'm like, did, how are you going to do this? Did not watch the game? Seriously. The floor recognizes Chief before his hand goes numb. <laughs> Blood drop. I, I think I think <laughs> Buffalo is going to bring in Ric Flair and you want to get them. <laughs> Woo! I, I I don't get what people don't see on TV. I sat there and watched the whole thing. I was mm-hmm. watching the game before and after. I was right. supporting this guy, going, "Hey, it's a great game." You know, the oh shit. I watched. Um, I watched. And then when they said point. the five minute announcement, there were players warming up. So don't say that they didn't. I actually saw them tossing footballs around. Yeah, if that, that's not warming up, you, what the hell was it? Because they, they didn't have a notice. protocol. They got the yeah. injury. Right. They throw up three, go to both sides. Of you. But, but for the there. media, once again, to lie to us yeah. and say, nobody wanted to do anything in that five minutes. They were throwing footballs around. You saw uh, stuff on Diggs in the rallying. in the huddle, rallying his guys yeah. like, let's do this for him. So don't say they weren't getting into it. Jesus Christ. You know who you know who had the best comments out of anybody? Me. Stop. <laughs> Booger McFarland. I hate that guy. I know you I it's know like Chris Collins was like don't but you, you know what? Skip Bayless but you know what? Oh, he he was <laughs> yeah, no shit. he was honest and and he he made you think about it as a person. Absolutely. Of what went on on the field. It wasn't about football at that point Absolutely. in time. It was about the human being that was on the field that had the freaking heart attack. All right. We got to wrap it up there. If anybody cares, I'm going to take the 49ers and I'm going to go with Cincinnati. Damn just sure. just because. Giants? Well, because I'm realistic about my Giants. That's fine. <laughs> I know. They're in. That's that's fine. That's I, like I, the Jacksonville Jaguar fans. <laughs> because they're going to lose. They're gonna, yeah. Well, they're going to lose this week against Philadelphia. I mean, and, and you know what, fans? Make sure you come out to Sam's Town, February 25th and 26th. That's no more money. <laughs> to the card know. show. That chief's going to be at. I'm not going to be signing autographs, so, but I am going to be working. All right, we are on because overtime. Because the chief said so. We are on overtime, so I have to end it thank right you. there. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the debut show of Thoughts Count Anywhere. Whether you're a wrestling fan or not, we provide entertainment with what and how we do it, so we appreciate you sticking with us. So, as always, Matt, final thoughts. Everybody have a good week. Love the new digs we're in. It's going to be a cool Gabbard experience. Gig, by the way, I don't know if anybody caught that. Stop. Stop. We're on overtime. Everybody have a good and safe week. Have fun. Tell somebody you love them. Thank you, Scott. Like I said earlier, you don't know when tomorrow might not come. Say something nice to somebody else. Chief, love you all. Mr. John, thank you very much, sir. Thomas. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Week. Weekend week, whatever. Weekend week. Ronald says I should fire you once and for all. Somebody throw frozen <laughs> keys <laughs> at Thomas. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I appreciate the top of the hour. Aaron Zauer will be coming here, and I've got two great guests. Al Savar, Frank Bazaar will be here in studio with me. And, of course, next week, the four of us, unless Scott chooses to come back again, which you're always welcome to, always. we're going to continue on more shenanigans, more stories about the world of pro wrestling. As always, be kind to everybody. Why? What do we have? We'll see you next time right here. Thoughts count anywhere. Thank you for watching. <laughs>